This is the Western Cape and the southern tip of South Africa and welcome to Val de Vie in Paul. For the grand finale of the 2018 Absa Cape Epic, the region is in the grips of a devastating drought but it's lost none of its spectacular beauty and rugged nature, the perfect setting for the untamed African mountain bike race. Weather is cool and no rain expected, little rain overnight but nothing uh, that uh, will create any difficulties at all for the riders as they approach this spectacular finish area. A year ago, the world and Olympic champion Nino Schurter arrived at his third Absa Cape Epic and joined up with fellow Swiss Matthias Sturmann to power the victory. It was a dominant performance in the latter stages of the week, his first triumph in his third race and the first for Matthias Sturmann. And it began an extraordinary year for Nino Schurter, who went on to win every round of the World Cup and the World Championship. He had a golden year. In the women's race, the Mirandal CBC pair of Esther Suss and Jenny Stenhoff put together eight days of solid, consistent racing to claim the victory in the 14th edition of the event. For Suss, a second win in six years, a first for an emotional Stenhoff. Among the 1,200 riders, nearly half have travelled from out of South Africa, 57 countries represented, and the traditional around-the-world party took place, as, took place a few days before the event as nations uh, showed their traditional dress and met fellow international riders. The Absa Cape Epic's loyalty program is the Amma Babesi Club. Well over a thousand riders have completed at least three Absa Cape Epics. Four have completed all 14. John Gale, Mike Nixon, Craig Beach and Hunla Stein. They're still going this year. Registration this year took place at the Prologue venue, which was the University of Cape Town. Collecting a race number, a wristband and the Chicon bag, suddenly the realization that there was no going back. You are in the deep end of the Absa Cape Epic. After the spectacular prologue on Table Mountain, the riders travelled out to Robertson for three days in the farms and mountains of the Breda River Valley before transitioning to Worcester for one night, the Queen's Stage to Wellington and now across to Val de Vie. The Epsa Cape Epic. The 20 kilometre course included 600 metres of climbing, taking the riders in an out and back course from the University of Cape Town in the shadow of one of the new seven natural wonders of the world. In the women's race, the German-South African pairing of former Olympic and world champion Sabine Spitz and national marathon champion Robin de Groot of Team Ascenders Health were back again to try and improve on their third place overall last year. De Groot showed little discomfort from her recent sciatic nerve problems as she and Spitz kept a steady tempo and clocked a time of 55 minutes and 32 seconds. Despite meeting only a week ago, three-time champion Ariane Luthi of Switzerland and new partner Gita Michiels found a compatible pace after the Belgian national cross-country champion had initially gone out hard. Luthi showed her improved form and technical skills on the plum pudding descent and the team spur combination was supreme as they came home a minute and 12 seconds faster than the Ascendeth Health pair in 54 minutes and 31 seconds. The start ramp fifth last was just the incentive needed for the Investec Songo specialized team of world marathon champion Annika Langfall of Denmark and her American partner Kate Courtney. The diminutive under-23 World Cup champion was given an occasional hand sling as Langfall cranked up the power on the loose rough ascents. They turned up the heat on Table Mountain Road and nailed the UCT single track, surging to the finish line in 53 minutes and 18 seconds to post the fastest time of the day. They were a minute and 12 seconds clear of Team Spurn, earned the right to wear the women's race leader's orange jerseys on stage one. Starting in 21st position in the men's race, the dark horse combination of Buff Scott's Francesc Caratero of Spain and Luis Pinto of Portugal flew beneath the radar and set the fastest early times at all three checkpoints as they finished in 46 minutes and 12 seconds. Whereas of the race leader's yellow jerseys for four days in last year's race, Manuel Fumic and Enrique Avancini of Cannondale Factory Racing were very much in the mix as they hunted down the Buff Scott pair's time. The German champion Fumic and Brazilian Avancini are cross-country specialists and relished the short technical sections on the course as they became the first team to dip under 46 minutes, posting 45 minutes and 41 seconds. They held the virtual lead for a couple of minutes before the Austrian-Swiss team of Daniel Gessmeyer and Nicola Rohrbach showed their preparations had been spot on. Third on GC last year, the combination of Robach's cross-country and cyclocross skills mixed with Gessmeyer's raw power was a potent cocktail on the slopes of Table Mountain. They crested the brutal dead man tree climb with a 24-second lead. They drilled the road section before swooping down the single track and contour roads and onto the field at UCT to post a winning time of 45 minutes and 23 seconds. 
Reigning champion Scott Strams, Nino Schert and Matthias Sturneman were off the pace in fourth place, 50 seconds behind the yellow jersey wearers of Team Centurion Varda. With 57 seconds separating the top five teams, the yellow jersey wearers of Team Centurion Voda, Robach and Gesmai were under pressure for much of the first long marathon stage of this week. The relatively flat first 40 kilometers took them through the village of McGregor. There was clearly plenty of nerves in the bunch and a mass pileup followed. Fortunately, no serious damage to riders or bikes. The main protagonists avoided incident and then made a big move on the low reaches of the steep tuck-up climb at 55 kilometers. Investec Songo specialized, fifth in the prologue and Canada Factory Racing second overall, put in an attack that separated them from the rest of the lead group as the race hit the top of the climb. Up the 14-kilometer tough Skelkrans climbed the quartet of Yaroslav Kulhavi and Howard Grotz and Manuel Fumik and Enrique Avancini worked together to open the gap further. Trek Seles and Marcos Fabian Rabensteiner and Michele Casagrande were strong and they also managed to shake the attentions of the main group and moved into third on their own. The undulating last 20 kilometers turned into a game of cat and mouse between the two leading teams as they prepared for the sprint finish. The twisting nature of the run to the finish saw Grotz lose contact as Kulhavi drove hard on the front and it was Fumik and Avancini who finished together just behind the Czech Express to claim their fourth epic stage win. Investec Songo specialized with second, Trek Salas and Marco in third. Today's big losers were the defending champion Scott Schramm pair of Nino Schurter and Matej Stierneman who leaked 21 minutes after Stierneman took ill. They finished the stage but late to withdrew for the race. The women's race turned into a battle between the two former teammates, Annika Langfall and Ariane Luti. They won three titles together but are now with new partners. Langfall, who is the marathon world champion, drove the pace hard in the chase and after the fourth water point they regained the lead. They managed to protect their advantage until the finish, coming home 52 seconds ahead of the team spur combination of Luti and Michiels. Day 3, Stage 2 of the Absa Cape Epic was an unrelenting 106-kilometer loop around the Robertson Valley, out and back from Arabella Wine Estate. Team Canada Factory Racing of Manuel Fumik and Henri Cavancini were in the yellow Zebra Leaders jerseys, just 40 seconds behind when Vestic Songo specialized Kulhavi and Grotz, with prologue winner Centuri and Varda third. World Marathon Champion Annika Langfall and US Champion Kate Courtney started the day in the orange Zebra Leaders jerseys in the women's race. They had two minutes and four seconds over Team Spurs Ariane Luthi and Gita Michels. The race is turning into one of the most competitive apps at Cape Epics ever. All the men's top teams keeping a close eye on one of the rivals' weaknesses. The pace was furious as they made their way through the farms and vineyards of the Robertson Valley. The slower team soon dropping off the lead bunch, which has thinned out to consist of Trek Salas and Marco, Cannondale Factory Racing, Canyon Topic, Centurion Vada, Bulls, Investec Songo Specialized and Buff Scott. Former Olympic and world champion Yaroslav Kolhavi, a two-time winner of the event, and new partner US champion Grotz took the initiative and opened a gap on the 1-2-3 climb, putting over a minute into the chasing pack. It was a huge effort, but not rewarded. Kolhavi punctured and the time was quickly absorbed. The chasing pack flew past and into the Bosfark Land Rover technical terrain. With Investec Songo Specialized chasing hard, the four leading teams, Canada Factory Racing, Canyon Topic of Lakata and Heineck, Buff Scott of Pinto and Caratero, and Centurion Vardas Robach and Gesmeyer approached the finish line at Arabella Wine Estate together. Centurion Varda attacked first, but cross-country specialist Manuel Fumik made a smart move. Alvin Lakata was in the mix, but partner Christian Heineck lagged at the back. Brazilian Avancini found a gap, and he sprinted past Robach, Lakata and Gesmeyer, and the Canada Factory Racing pair crossed the line together to take a well-deserved win after a tough stage. In the women's race, Annika Langfall and Kate Courtney of Investec Songo Specialized put in an attack 30 kilometers from home. And through the Danes' relentless power on the flats and the American champion's consistent climbing, they built a formidable buffer to Team Spur and Silverback KMC. Investec Songo Specialized took the win at Arabella. Four and a half minutes later, Michiels managed to put in a huge effort and miraculously, she and Luti took second for Team Spur. The Belgian collapsing in exhaustion after crossing the finish line. Silverback KMC took third. The Absa Cape Epic reached its halfway stage on the eight-day journey from Table Mountain to Val de Vie in par with the longest stage of transition from Robertson to Worcester. Yellow jerseys Manuel Fumik and Henri Cavancini of Canada Factory Racing had 40 seconds over Yaroslav Kulhavi and Howard Grotz of Investec Songo Specialized as they charged away from the start. In the women's race, Denmark's Annika Langfall and Kate Courtney from the U.S. in the orange leaders' jerseys were six and a half minutes clear of biggest rivals Ariane Luthi and Gita Michiels. With the lead group strung out, Austria's Lakata and Czech partner Heineck were first through the dimension data hotspot at 18 kilometers. But on the steep Peters Express climb, Kulhavi and Grotz led the way with a bunch of chasing teams in hot pursuit. 
On the descent, the Czech Express, Kulhavi and Grotz showed their technical skills and powered ahead. Only Canyon Toe Peaks, Lakata and Heineck were able to follow. On the sandy Fainbos Trail of the Porcupine Trap, Kulhavi and Grotz drove the train at high speed, but they couldn't shake world marathon champion Lakata and Heineck. The chase group with overall leaders Fumi Canavancini and seven other teams were more than four minutes back. Dropping off the Penhill climb, disaster struck for Kulhavi and Grotz when they suffered a puncture and had to effect running repairs for the third time in two days. Canyon Topeak led the race through the Land Rover technical terrain. Investec Songo specialized, pulled back quickly and led by a phenomenally strong Kulhavi. But inside the last 10 kilometers, Grotz though started to fade and Kulhavi had to wait. Heineck and Lukata pushed on and quickly opened a small lead. After an eight-year break, Lukata won a stage at the Absa Cape Epic, his first with Heineck. The Canyon Topeak pair crossing the finish line in Worcester, a minute and 11 seconds ahead of Kulhavi and Grotz. Fumic and Avancini lost the yellow jersey to new overall leaders Kulhavi and Grotz. In the women's race, Team Ascenders Health, Germany's Sabine Spitz and Robin de Groot from South Africa led for over half the stage. But just before the third water point, Aran Lutin, Gidmi Hills of Team Spur and overall leaders Langfall and Courtney of Investex Ongo Specialized caught the leaders. Shortly afterwards, Langfall and Courtney made the decisive move. And despite a small fall in soft sand, they were able to calmly remount and power home for their fourth stage victory ahead of Lutin and Michels, who won the sprint over Spitz and de Groot. Stage four of the Absa Cape Epic lived up to its billing as the Queen stage as the remaining riders tackled a brutally tough and rough 113 kilometers from Worcester to Wellington. Investex Songo Specialized took a 2 minute and 12 second lead over Canada Factory Racing into the stage. In the women's race, the withdrawal of Team Spur through illness to Hitomi Hills meant Annika Langfall and Kate Courtney had a 24 minute lead over Silverback KMC's last and Strauss. At the 60-kilometre mark, the riders entered the Slangwook Traverse, a superb flowing single track that suited the cross-country skills of Avancini and Fumik. The former yellow jersey holders drove a high pace and forged a gap of over a minute on Centurion, Vada, Bulls, Investex, Ongo Specialized and Buff Scott. Fourth on GC, 10 minutes down, Centurion, Vada's Nicola Rohrbach and Daniel Gesmeyer made their move on the historic Bainscliffe Pass. It was completed in 1854. It's the only way to cross the mountain range. Centurion Vada had the raw power to bridge the gap on the relentless climb and passed a tiring Cannondale pair of Fumich and Avancini. Gesmeyer and Robach flew down the Velvin Pass trails and onto the dirt roads and eventually the tar road and into Wellington, maintaining a solid lead and a solid pace. They eventually took their second stage win at the Absa Cape Epic in 2018. Behind them, Investec Songo Specialized won the race for second place over Buff Scott MTB. It was rinse, wash, repeat in the women's race, with Investec Songo specialized Courtney and Langfall proving to be too strong for the rest of the field once more. They initially rode with Mariska Strauss and Annie Lars of Silverback KMC, as well as Ascenders Health's Robin de Kruit and Sabine Spitz. But they soon dropped them and struck out on their own, as they have done for all the stages. They duly powered to yet another victory ahead of Team Silverback KMC and Ascenders Health. Starting the day in third place overall, the marathon world champion Alban Lakata and 2014 epic winner Christian Heineck continued an impressive week. Austrian Lakata has yet to win the race but is highly motivated to break his duck and this is ninth attempt. The Canyon Toe Peak pair powered up the steep climbs and dealt smoothly with the rugged single track and they rolled over the line in 1 hour 46 minutes and 42 seconds. Starting ninth last, the Italian team of Trek Celes and Marco, Fabian Ravensteiner and Michele Casagrande, who have struggled to build on their third place on stage one, were on song. Ravenstein has completed the previous two Cape Epics, eighth overall being his best place. For Casa Grande, this is his first epic experience. And they took the hot seat with a time of 1 hour, 45 minutes and 22 seconds. Canada Factory Racing's Manuel Fumic and Enrique Avancini didn't have a good day. They were caught just before the cool running's descent by race leaders Investex Ongo Specialized, who started three minutes after the German and Brazilian. They eventually finished in fifth in 147.59. Yaroslav Kulhavi and Howard Grotz were last to leave the start, and they were soon setting the quickest times at the checkpoints. The Czech is a former Olympic and world champion in both cross country and marathon, and the tough course suited his power riding perfectly. U.S. champion Grotz in his second epic as a classy climber. The Investec Songo specialized pair's tactics paid off handsomely, and they crossed the finish line 33 seconds faster than the Czech Celis and Marco pair to take their first stage win of the race. The women's category saw runaway leaders Investec Songo specialized having to work a lot harder for their sixth stage win of the week. Annika Langfall and Kate Courtney were super slick and skilled on the second half as they charged down the cool running single track. 
They found a perfect balance. Langford driving the pace on the front on the flats and Courtney leading on the descents. They clawed back 40 seconds over the last 20 kilometres to win by 12 and a half seconds from Ascender South. Silverback KMC with third. One of the Absa Cape Epic's official charity partners, Kuberka, made a significant contribution to learners at the Klein Niederberg High School in Paal. 250 Kuberka bikes were donated to the boys and girls during the week. The funding for the bikes came from South Africa's only World Tour cycling team, Dimension Data for Kuberka, who funded 113 Buffalo bikes, whilst the 2017 Absa Cape Epic teams who raced for Kuberka donated 137 bikes. A few of the Epic's top riders took time out to hand over the bikes and meet some of the youngsters. The children earned their bikes through a Kuberka Learn to Earn program implemented by the Western Cape Government Health Western Cape Wellness Initiative. Stage six of the Absa Cape Epic unfolded under mercifully cloudy and cool skies as the remaining riders tackled 76 kilometers out and back from Huchende to Squirrel in Wellington. Leading by over seven minutes, Investec Songo Specialized were in the comfortable position of not having to make the moves. The battle for second was where the focus was, with Canyon Topeak leading Cannondale Factory Racing by just four seconds. Manuel Fumik and Henri Cavancini of Cannondale tried all they could to get away over the first 30 kilometers, but they couldn't escape the attentions of Canyon Topeak's Licata and Heineck and the Buff Scott and Trex LS and Marco teams. On the day's biggest climb, the Green Mumba ascent, rough, loose and exposed, Kulhavi and Grotz applied the pressure and they were soon on their own. The longest section of single track of the entire race through the Velvin Plus MTB trails below Baines Kloof allowed the Czech and the US champion to build a sizable lead. Lakata was struggling on the back of the chase group which allowed Cannondale to drive the pace. They were joined by Buff Scott and Trek, but their race was all about the podium places. Up ahead, Kulhavi and Grotz were putting the finishing touches to their second successive stage win as they charged towards Wellington. The race leaders crossed the line in three hours and nine minutes. A minute and seven seconds later, Ravenstein and Casagrande of Trek Celis and Marco rolled home for their best result of the week, with Cannondale a few meters behind them. Investec Songo Specialized again dominated the women's category. World Marathon champion Denmark's Annika Langfell and American cross country champion Kate Courtney proved to be untouchable for the seventh day in a row. Langfell possesses phenomenal power, and Courtney, riding her first epic, has been the ideal foil on the climbs. Team Ascenders Health, Sabine Spitz and Robin de Groot were second on the day, and Margot Moschetti and Rainer Gallo, their best result of the week when they finished third for PMRACST. And the net result after seven days of racing is that Kulhavi and Grotz have uh, forged an 8 minute and 27 second lead over Fumic and Avancini, who are just 20 seconds ahead of Lakatra and Heineck of Canyon Topic. That racing is going to be fascinating on this final day. Great week for Buff Scott and former champion Platt and Uber now down in 10th. Jesse and Birkus, the best of the uh, African teams, and Maklangeni and Claw leading the Xara category. Yeah, exactly, the, the gap is uh, amazing for us and we hope just uh, we will need just uh, a little bit of luck and uh, that's all. I mean, physically we are uh, really strong and uh, yeah, I hope that's pretty good gap. It, it's been incredible. Uh, obviously, you know, it's not over till it's over, but it's, it's really nice to have things just clicking in these last few days and uh, just, you know, hope, hope for some luck and, and roll in safely tomorrow. It's been utterly dominant from Investec Songo Specialized in the women's race. They have 46 minute lead over Spitz and Dukruid Strauss and last in third. Lil and McDougall of Dorma Carver are the leaders in the APSA African women's jerseys. Today we didn't, we didn't actually focus on, on uh, putting in more time on the, the GC because it's already a, a nice lead. That being said, the real challenge at the moment is to stay focused. It couldn't be more important than now, actually. So that we'll, we'll do tomorrow again and hopefully yeah, take the overall win tomorrow. But you have to stay totally focused until the very last finish line because anything can still happen. You know, every day is a race. Like That's something that I think I didn't appreciate as much going into the Cape Epic. When you watch it from afar, you think, oh, they have a huge lead or, oh, this, this team is beating this team. but. You know, every day we all pull up to the white line and it's about who can get back there the fastest. So um, doing our best to really stay focused, stay in the moment and uh, not take too many risks, but also race our bikes. 
The attritional nature of the Absa Cape Epic has seen some significant withdrawals, none more significant than the defending champion team of Scherter and Sternemann. The Scots Ram pair pulling out after the first stage. Sternemann suffering a stomach bug and Nino Scherter also pulling out. Their young guns also have not finished the race. The defending women's champion Esther Sus lost her partner Jenny Stenhach due to injury before the event. Her replacement Angelika Tazreta from Austria injured a shoulder in a crash on the opening stage and also had to withdraw from the injury from the race. Sus is riding as a lone leopard. And disappointment for Ariane Luti, her partner Gita Michiels, another late replacement, the Belgian cross-country champion, dug so deep for three days and eventually she succumbed to illness and had to withdraw from the race. The beautiful Drakenstein Valley. And a little bit earlier this morning, this was the start of the men's UCI elite batch leaving the Huchenurte High School in Wellington for this final stage, 68 kilometers to Val de Vie. It is a tough stage with 2,000 meters of unrelenting climbing, plenty of uh, work for these riders to do. The pressure immediately applied at the front. There'll be riders and teams here chasing glory on the final day after what might have been for them some disappointing performance through the week. Winning the grand finale can uh, really make up for some disappointments during the week. And immediately it's strung out on the front with the main contenders, most of them uh, the men we've seen through the week, setting the pace early on. Wellington was the host for three nights at the Absa Cape Epic this year and the riders absolutely love the trails around the Velvet Pass region. We had the time trial there a couple of days ago over 39 kilometers. A little bit earlier this morning it was evident that Manuel Fumik was starting to take strain. The Canada factory racing German champion he and Henri Gavincin had won two stages and worn the yellow jersey for a couple of days but ultimately the week's uh, stresses and strains were taking uh, a toll on the German Avancini dropping back to assist him. The pace was being applied and the pressure applied by Investec Songo Specialized and it fractured that lead group, leaving Avancini and Fumic to try and play catch up. Avancini, the Brazilian, has been rock solid all week. He's perhaps been the stronger of the two and he managed to drag his partner back to join this group, which was the Tope Canyon Topic uh, pair of Jeremiah Bishop and Eric Kleinans riding in support of the uh, Canyon Topic leading team. And then a bit of drama here. Down goes uh, Fumik and taking down with him Jeremiah Bishop of Canyon Topic. Well, Fumik was all right, but I'm afraid Jeremiah Bishop went down a lot harder than the German. The American <laughs> suffering here, no question about it. He took a serious knock. What happened there? We'll have to find out as the... Uh, Riders come home, but it did look as though Fumich went into Bishop. This is the route for this final stage, the grand finale. As they start at Dijonurta High School in Wellington and head up into the Abiqua and Havakwa Mountains. They'll ride some familiar trails to a lot of these riders as they climb to just below the Toyskluv Pass. And then they fly down through the forested areas underneath the bridge of the N1 to the second water point. And then to water point three, which is at Avondale. And the final finish here. A new finish as they come down Bone Rattler and into Val de Vie. It's by no means a gimme this uh, final day. So here we are, the uh, leading women. And Kate Courtney looking very relaxed. And alongside Annika Langfeld, they have been astonishing as they take the dimension data hotspot earlier on the Trek Celis and Marco pair had taken in the men's so another dominant performance by Annika Langfell and Kate Courtney so that all happened earlier today and now we are watching live action and this is the lead group and it is a fairly significant lead group and it's an opportunity now for me to uh, introduce our commentary team, a cast uh, that we have here of thousands. Neil Gardner sitting alongside me, been watching the racing from the helicopter and voicing, helping us voice in the evenings. Neil, welcome. Thank you very much, Gerald. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here this week. Some incredible racing and uh, we had really had a good view from that helicopter. And uh, just uh, to witness the, the, the changing in, in the dynamics of the race and uh, the terrain, it's, uh, it's really been tremendously exciting. The last man to sit alongside or stand alongside Yaroslav Gulhavi at the top step of the podium 
was Christoph Sazer when he won his fifth title. He rode with Kohlhavi last year, and he's sitting alongside us this uh, year. Thanks very much, Christoph Sazer, the five-time champion, for joining us. Christoph? Yes, I had an uh, absolute uh, pleasure uh, watching the guys racing uh, on TV. So I hope uh, you at home, uh, if, if it's uh, on, on your uh, Wi-Fi device or, or now live on TV. Well, uh, they go around one of the uh, very, very low dams here, and we've talked about that through the week, the drought that's affected the Western Cape, and it's left some of the trails very, very loose and, uh, and rough and rocky as they are. Live on board with uh, Thomas Dietsch on the e-bike as he sits behind the uh, Trek Celis and Marco rider, the Kelly Casagrande. So significant uh, absentees from this group are the Canada factory racing pair. We saw that crash from Manuel Fumic and that uh, certainly will uh, keep them uh, from bridging across here. Well, certainly they'll do well to get across here if they ever do. Well, there's an interesting dynamic that goes on at the uh, in the grand finale at the Absecape Epic and in Val de Vie is that uh, this is a highly prestigious stage to win. It's the Champs-Élysées of mountain biking, and uh, to win a, a grand finale stage is, is a great thing to have on your Palmares. So uh, it adds some new dynamics into the racing. Obviously, it's a great stage to win. Some of the riders may even be targeting this stage in particular to win and uh, maybe backing off in the, the first couple of uh, or the, the stages preceding this. Um, then, of course, there's the race for overall GC, and uh, none of the riders would, would even let up for a second to let anyone go ahead. So the racing is pretty frantic with some new players in the mix there. Well, Avancini and uh, Primic here trying to drag themselves back. Avancini just uh, sitting behind uh, and obviously struggling. Manuel Primic had that crash a little bit earlier today. So, Canyon Toe Peak, uh, Jeremiah Bishop is the support rider for Alban Locato and Christian Heineck. Uh, not sure if he's uh, up and running and riding, but uh, let's hope he is uh, back on his bike. We obviously got a tremendous view from, uh, from the helicopter right here. Just some insight from the course. We've seen that uh, at the first checkpoint, which is at the 18 kilometer mark, that is in fact positioned right where the men's and women's hotspot is, the dimension data hotspot is positioned at the 18 kilometer mark and we saw Trek Salasan Marco go through there first and they had a 15 second lead on Canyon Topic, Investec Songo Specialized and Buff Scott all riding together. The dynamic has changed. Buff, Buff Scott, Canyon Topic and Investec Songo Specialized have caught Trek Salasan Marco and the group of four teams ride together. I believe um, this group will stay all together until the, the last climb with uh, a good 15 k's, 20 k's to go, the bone rattler. It's uh, quite a uh, loose climb, especially towards the end. And then we'll see whoever is uh, not cheesy content contender, they will, they will fly down the descent, which is uh, fast but very rocky and uh, can, cause, can cause mechanicals. After that, it's all flat and fast towards the end. Well, that dynamic of uh, the final day is always fascinating with teams, as uh, Neil suggested. They're Trek Celis and Marco targeting this day. Buff Scott have had a good week. They want to try and get onto the top step. We even had uh, Joaquim Rodriguez and Jose Mida up there at some stage in the top ten. And uh, Jose Mida, a previous multiple winner of this grand finale stage alongside Rudy van Hoot. So he decided he wanted to have a bash, but uh, he's not in the mix now. Fumik and Avancini, they're dangling some way off it at the moment. And, uh, well, they just, uh, I, just judging by the way they're going there, they're now perhaps given up hope of catching up that group and are going to trail in to uh, finish the race and be secure in third place. Just 20 seconds between second and third. And uh, it looks like the Carter and Heineck, Heineck might have that second place. They're coming through Avondale here and the water point at 47 kilometers. Heineck on the front for Canyon Topeak. They've had a rock solid week, one stage win. It's been eight years since uh, Alvin Licata won a stage at the Absa Cape Epic. It's not really what he wanted to do, he wanted to win the race. But Buff Scott there, Investic Songo Specialized, and uh, Trek Celis and Marco. Interesting to see how fast they were going through that water point. Uh, it goes without saying they didn't even stop. The riders are most likely stocked up. 
for uh, almost the entire stage. And Christoph Sauser next to me will be able to give us some insight as to the tactics and the strategy behind refueling. No refueling at this water point. They went through it. We just saw how fast Trek Selesomarka went through that last corner. They really are on the limit and chasing a victory at the Val de Wine Estate. Today it's not hot, uh, super good temperature to ride, even a bit on the on the chillier side. Um, I believe they only stopped at the middle uh, feed zone and they will not stop on top of, of the climb, which is the, the end climb, which has the last feed zone. They will, uh, they will all ride through. If, if you know how long it takes to, to get new bowlers, it can up take up to 20 seconds if you're alone there and chase back 20 seconds with, with that speed. Um, if you limit, it's most likely you not, you not catch up anymore. What sort of food would they be uh, for a stage of this nature after this week, uh, Christoph? What would uh, Yaroslav and, and how would you be taking with them? They're mostly on, on gels for over the whole week. Um, how he said, uh, it's, it's just so furious, he, he hardly can't chew. It's actually important that, that you also eat some solid food over, over eight days. It helps your recovery. But uh, what can you do if, if it's so, so fast and you really don't have the time to, to open the bar and, and chew it? Now we just got some time. The riders came through that time check. That's at the water point. It's the 47.5 kilometer mark. Canyon Topic, Investec Songa Specialized, Buff Scott, and Trek Salasan Marcos, Fabian Rabensteiner, and Michele Casagrande. Well, it's been a remarkable week from the Investec Songa Specialized uh, combination. And uh, they've only won two stages. Of course, Nicola Robach and uh, Daniel Gesmeyer won two stages, including the prologue. And uh, there they come. This is the second of the Buff Scott teams come through with Robach and Gesmeyer. And Gesmeyer's been so strong all week. Robach, perhaps, the, as the week has progressed, has uh, got a little bit weaker. Yeah, it's always interesting to see the team dynamic between the riders. And uh, we would normally have pegged uh, uh, Daniel Gesmeyer and uh, Nicola Robach as a pretty equal partnership. The dynamic does change throughout the week, and sometimes it can be uh, easier if it's clear from the very beginning who the dominant partner and who the uh, who the who the slightly weaker partner is. It's it's uh, when one has to guess all week exactly who's stronger on the day and who's not stronger on the day. This uh, this can add an extra dimension to the team dynamic in two two person team racing. Going uh, through this group uh, of thinking of their interest. Invest Exongo specialized. All they want is, is going to the finish. Um, they don't care much about the stage win. They they will hang in and be as safe as possible. Uh, Canyon, their interest is riding into second place. That's uh, their main goal today. But if if they come with a with a group to the finish, they always go full gas for for the stage win. Buff Scott, they're hanging. They they can't really move to to third unless really the Canyon Dallas would would battle super hard and maybe get, get the mechanical so they're, they're riding more for, for the stage win I, I believe and then um, who else do we have? Trek. We have Czech Sellers on Marco they they obviously are, are on fire for, for the stage win they, they showed a very good shape over the last three days and I think they, they will go flat out in, in the last downhill and of course any professional cyclist uh, in, in this group and uh, in fact in the entire field in a situation like this as the race is they'll be all too aware of exactly the insight that Christoph Sauser has just shared every rider will, will know the dynamics every rider will know what the other team's uh, agenda is and there'll be a lot of poker and some guesswork as well going into it the, the interesting thing here is that there are three uh, Trek Stellis and Marco riders in this group which is unusual because obviously it's a two-person uh, two uh, rider team but uh, there's one man who's not in here. Damiano Ferrara is missing from this uh, group of the Trek Celis and Marco riders. Whether he, we, we, we haven't yet got information whether he's, he's riding further back or indeed he may, may have taken ill and pulled out of the race just after the start today. But it does give Trek Celis and Marco an extra rider in this group. And uh, Samuele Porto, obviously Damiano Ferrara did start this morning, which allows him to be involved in the racing today and, and uh, play a role in this uh, lead group. But if anyone's going to do anything here, they've got to deal with your man on the front there, Yaroslav Gulhavi. As we look back at the women's race, our first live images of the women's race, Annika Langfall and Kate Courtney are leading, but this pair, Robin de Groot on the front there, is looking really strong as she goes up the climb through the vineyards with Sabine Spitz 
just a few meters behind her the german champion a legend in the sport and uh, she's dug deep again this week and they've got themselves into second place on gc and uh, they should defend that although they're six minutes back to silverback kmc so that's their primary objective they're 46 minutes back on gc We just got some messages from the time check at the at the top at the Dimension Data hotspot. They were over a minute behind off Investec Songo Specialized, so it looks unlikely for them to win the stage. Uh, they'll be looking very, uh, very much towards just consolidating their uh, podium position. They're riding up now a, a smaller climb here, and then it goes flattish but quite rugged towards the Bone Rattler, the last obstacle of the of today. And that uh, last obstacle of the day has been really something that we've been speaking about all week, uh, running into the grand finale at Val de Vie. This is uh, quite an unusual stage in, in, his, in history. We've seen the Absic FFA seeing a slightly easier day in the, in, the, in the last day in the grand finale, which uh, opens up the, the stage to maybe some more riders. Uh, not in this case. It is a full-blown, hardcore Absic Epic stage. All, all relative, of course. Uh, uh, if there is some, such a thing as an easy Absecape Epic stage, this uh, perhaps used to be. Uh, last year from uh, Oak Valley to Val de Vie, they had the Frontrook Pass on the uh, tar to come over, and it was a fairly forgiving stage after seven really, really tough days. But today, there's nothing forgiving about this as you have a look at these trails. They're battling away with the loose rocks and the rough terrain, and that's what makes this Absecape Epic such a challenge. Right to the last day, you'll be put, out, put to test. And the, we are watching the elite riders here. Of course, they're thousands behind who are going to be battling their way towards the finish line to earn a very coveted and cherished uh, finishers medal at Val de Vie. So you may be asking, what of uh, Carl Platt, the former champion, five-time winner here, of course, and Urs Huber. Unfortunately, they haven't had the week they were hoping for. And uh, they're swinging just on the, on the cusp of the top ten of the race. What of the... South African teams, of course, Julian Jessup and Matthijs Bierkus are the uh, leaders in the Apps Africa jersey competition there. Uh, Matthew Beers and Nico Bell, Nad Pro Mountain Biking, were slated as perhaps favourites to win that title, but Beers was ill at the start of the week. They've got a lot stronger as the week's progressed, and they're mixing it at the uh, second and third groups in the, in the race at the moment, but they lost over an hour and a half at the start of the week, so certainly not in contention on GC or in the Apps Africa jersey. Glance over his shoulder there from Cool Harvey. Seeing what damage has uh, been caused by his relentless driving. He's put in a little bit of a surge here. Yeah, we just heard from uh, Christoph Saza that uh, the yellow jerseys in Vestex Songo Specialized might want to just uh, take today easy and um, then just solidify their lead, make sure they get across the line safely. But just judging by the pace and the urgency of the, of the riding by Yaroslav Cool Harvey, it seems. It could be two things. Perhaps they're keeping themselves out of trouble or they really want to win the stage today. It's important that you actually uh, keep on pushing and not just uh, trying to hang in and maybe lose uh, concentration. Also that last downhill where, where it's rough, um, it's better to, to still on the, on, the, on the race mode and not just like, oh, let's go, go super easy. And then suddenly you, you look at the rocks instead of just uh, more, more uh, flying and, and tipping over those rocks. So it's very important that uh, you're still a bit in the in the attacking mode. So that's often the the best defense. We just saw a glimpse of the uh, Cannondale Factory Racing Team, and we've been following them because they have second place overall. Uh, they were they went into the race today, into the stage today, with uh, lying in second. They have lost huge amounts of time, over five minutes. So it looks like they're um, they. In fact, I correct myself. They have lost three minutes at that time check. So they are out of second place and into third place. Let's hope that their third place is not in jeopardy from Team Buff Scott. Well, that's confirmation of the overall at the moment. So Canada Factory Racing are just under seven minutes ahead of Team Buff Scott. And, uh, well, you would think that they would have to have a, a pretty poor day, Cannondale Factory Racing, a lot poorer now than uh, they're going at the moment. They should be secure in third place. But Canyon Toe Peak, they will uh, be in second place if it stays this way. 
Albert Lakata desperately looking for a win at the Alps of Cape Epic to add to his already glittering Palmares, but it's not to be this year. Well, they say anything can happen uh, at the Alps of Cape Epic, and it has happened in the final stage. Um, however, just the professionalism and uh, the way that uh, this team has gone about things, it does look highly unlikely. Winning the last stage is definitely the, the coolest stage of, of the whole week. Although the prologue or day one, they're, they're the most important to win, uh, especially for, for your head, for your nerves. Uh, you know you're in the race if, if you've done well. But prestigious, emotion-wise, last day is the best. So it'll be a great run into Valdivy Wine Estate. Oh, Val Valdivy Estate is uh, it's actually a really cycle-friendly estate. A lot of uh, the residents enjoy riding around uh, on the trails. There's some new trails. And um, in fact, uh, it's not just a cycle friendly. One of the famous cyclists, um, famous road cyclists, Malcolm Langer, uh, stays here. And his son is a very promising young rider, too. So, um, very much in this, all in the cycling community here. So, Trek Seller to Marco, you saw just cresting that climb, had uh, gone to the front after Yaroslav Kulhavi and uh, Howard Gotts had put on a bit of a surge towards the top of the climb. And uh, Fabian Rappensteiner and Michele Casagrande went uh, hard up that uh, over the top. There they are on the front of it now. now there's no question about their intentions uh, surrounding this stage today, Trek Seller Marco. Ravensteiner has finished eighth uh, in the Absa Cape Epic. Trek Celis and Marcos, uh, Samuel Poro and uh, Damiano Ferraro finished third two years ago and won stage four. So they have some pedigree and they brought two teams here. Perhaps not entirely sure of what their pecking order would be, but at very early on it became clear that Ravenstein and Casagrande were the team uh, to, uh, to look at as the general classification team. Very important to get your last uh, gel in, your last energy um, in, into your bloodstream basically because uh, they're approaching this climb and if you want to win the stage uh, you definitely have, have to have your blood, ch blood chocolate level uh, at, at your fullest. This is the climb that we've all been talking about exactly where we think it's all going to happen. There are four teams up front here and no doubt on this steep climb and of course the descent It'll splinter into many pieces. Well, we are led to believe that the early stages, and there was some uh, decent climbing early on in this race, right up to the Dimension Data Hotspot, which was taken by uh, Pavin Rabensteiner and Michele Casagrande. But there was uh, a blitz at the front of the uh, group early on from uh, Investec Songo Specialized. We tried to drive it, they took a few teams with them and it just shattered that lead group very, very early on. On their right side, they actually can see, see the finish, but they, they really have to do that extra loop. For, for them, uh, if, if you feel good, it's, it's fine, but I think uh, for some of the back markers, it's going to be, be a, a real struggle still. It's, it's one of the cruelest things in sport, is, is getting around towards the finish and you can, you can see the finish, but you're... Your device tells you you've got another eight, ten kilometers to go and a few climbs. Uh, it can be so demoralizing. But for all these riders, I believe at the back of the field, our uh, hyenas, Rich McMartin and Rob Vogel, are riding with the very back of the field. They said the spirit out there right now is just amazing. There's a great uh, vibe, and they know they've done pretty much everything they need to do. They just need to get safely through the stage, and they will have an absolute Cape Epic uh, medal around their neck in a few hours time it's a very important thing for the riders to take today as a celebration of the of the week of the hard week and the hard work that they've been putting in uh, there is really it doesn't serve any of them to be nervous um, and as Christoph Sauza just said uh, if you're nervous you're looking at every rock you're looking at everything that could possibly go wrong rather than looking at the positive really important mindset to keep if you're aiming to finish in one piece in a minute or two there's going to be a, a sharp left-hander and into a single track, the uphill single track, so it's very good when you're in the front. So a little look around from uh, Yaroslav Kulhavi. And uh, there's no question. Lovely to see the Trek Celis and Marco team out here looking for something special here we go onto the climb 
Very important positioning. This is a really narrow climb. Then we saw Trek Salasamaka go in first. This was not by accident. They made absolutely certain that they were at the front. And no doubt we're going to see some hard riding, some hard climbing, and hopefully they'll they'll uh, they'll be giving us some a great show on the racing. They will want to put maximum pressure down and maybe grow some gaps. Not easy when you've got Yaroslav Kulhovy behind you. He'll uh, be certain to follow the wheel, which is only to the uh, advantage of the team Buff Scott and Canyon Topi. Really, really rough uh, climb this. And uh, Buff Scott sitting on the back here. This is Guerra, the uh, smaller of the two riders from Spain. Pinto on the front, the Portuguese of the Buff Scott teams. Uh, he's worked really hard this week. Uh, again, perhaps a little bit of a difference between the two in terms of their strength. And uh, Guerra already starting to lose ground at the back of the uh, group. Again, super cool image. Um, you, you really feel for the rider. You you see the terrain and uh, such good image from 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 those e-bikes. It all seems to be in one piece. This group at the moment. We really expected some uh, some more fireworks, but there is quite a long way to go. Maybe when the trail opens out a bit, we should uh, maybe see uh, Canyon Topi coming to the front. Uh, right now, all these four together. It rained during the night and it just made the, the trail, the, the roads just absolutely perfect for today's race. You also see they're, they're super clean, the bikes are super clean, the, the chain, the, it, it's just perfect, absolutely perfect conditions to race. This is Michele Casagrande on the front, Fabian Rabensteiner uh, behind him. And uh, both have uh, done th that Brazil ride and did pretty well there as well. Yes, it's uh, it's a very very good good race. Uh, it's as I mentioned, actually the the course is harder, the competition obviously way less, and that what actually matters for for the pro. What uh, to have a hard or or not hard race? It's it's much more the competition than the course. We just um, saw. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. We just saw Howard Grotz there struggling in the sand. He's uh, it's been his nemesis this week. If he's had shown any weakness whatsoever, which has not been a lot has been the sandy sections. I do believe uh, adding a stage race at the end of, of the year is keeps, keeps your shape uh, a little bit longer going. You won't have to train so early already in November. And um, your body just remembers again, uh, especially towards the end of, uh, of Upsa Cape Epic, you know, how to recover, how to activate your body. I think uh, a Brazil ride at the end of the year is, uh, is, is a, good, a good plan for the Upsa Cape Epic. Look at Lakata wrestling with his bike there. On his tail is uh, Christian Heineck. You don't get the appreciation of just how steep this is uh, from this angle. You saw from the riders how uh, difficult it is and uh, the way they bent double there. With the lead bunch here at the Absa Cape Epic's grand finale as the lead bunch start to, uh, well, they've been on this climb for a minute or two. It's Trek Selis and Marke, Marke on the front there, Fabian Rabsteimer and uh, Mikeli Casagrande. The yellow jerseys of Jaroslav Kulhavi and Howard Grotz behind them. And then the, the nominal second place at the moment, Canyon Topik, Alban Lakata and Christian Heineck, followed by Buff Scott, Pinto and Guerra. And then one lone uh, Trek Salis Marco rider, Samuel Poro, riding in support of his teammates further up. It's a brutal climb, this, as they make their way up uh, to the top. Just when you get over the edge, uh, there on the, on the left, the track opens up again. So there's no more single track. And we'll see if that groove dynamic will change if some teams from the back uh, will come to the front. In Vesek Songo, specialized, there's no pressure on, on the two boys. Their pressure is basically an uh, image that they can also keep up on, on the last day and uh, just riding safe home to the finish. This is a freedom struggle, this climb, and uh, well, there's uh, lots of synergy with the Drakenstein municipality here. Of course, the Mandela Legacy Correctional Facility is no more than probably about four or five kilometers from where they are now down in the base of the valley. And uh, it was known then as Victor Pasteur. Uh, that is uh, where Nelson Mandela was released from 
and there's a beautiful uh, statue at the gate which they may well see as they come down the other side but, uh, this is a struggle of a different kind yes we'll see some we'll see some views of that and uh, no doubt the other riders will be will be focusing on one thing only and that's the uh, prize at Val de Vie, the, the the podium and um, and uh, t top spot I guess the um, just it's interesting to see the dynamic it's we really expected to see more fireworks on this section as soon as the road opens out we'll uh, we'll we'll be able to detect who the stronger riders are um, one would imagine that perhaps Investec Songa Specialized might feel a little bit caged uh, behind uh, Trixella Samarco in this single track climb but uh, like Christoph Sauser said it could be that the oh we having said that it looks like we've just seen Investec Songa Special that's Yaroslav Gulhavi has just put in a surge able to respond Alban Lakata. Well, you know, we talked, we've talked a lot of this week about uh, Alban, at least Yaroslav Kohavi's power and how he's, he's dictated this race to, to, to a large degree. But the man on his wheel, Howard Grotz, has been quite remarkable. And uh, look at Lakata battling to stay with him. And uh, there's one man who is uh, also again losing uh, his uh, partner's wheel, and that's Guerra into up the road where as soon as that surge went on he stepped off the pace this is uh, makes the dynamic in the group a little bit more relaxed if there's three spots on the podium at Val de Vie, that means that uh, uh, if there's three three teams it means that everyone in that little group will have a guaranteed spot on that podium uh, perhaps a little less a uh, little less jostling for position but it is bad news for team buff Scott his partner will have to drop back whereas partner Pinto will need to regain con or let Pinto regain contact leaving the three teams to race up ahead. This serves these teams up ahead very well because, as we said, there's a little less of a, little less of a jostle at the sprint. But the most important thing here is when they get to the top, they're going to have to descend an extremely rocky section of the trail. It's called Bone Rattler, and there are some massive rocks in the way and very easy for uh, a rider to cut a tire or have a mechanical on this section. It will be important for for the leaders to go first into the downhill, they do a very good job to to, uh, to lead off here. It's also mentally it's good to to be in the front and the guys in the back. They it's uh, it's not demoralizing, but you know they've they've showed they had the, the best shape over over the whole week. And um, yeah, there's the leaders' jersey, and that always reflects a bit on on your mind when you're riding be behind them. Uh, it's not long to go anymore. I expect about four. Uh, maximum four to five minutes and they they ride over the top into that downhill now we're rolling back uh, to our grand masters and uh, this is massimo de Bartolis and andre fochik they've been involved in it i mentioned data masters thank you pardon race we've seen the, the lead change many times through the week they're just at that uh, 47 kilometer mark got water point nothing is lost for scott buff um, they can close that also in, in the downhill a little, a little bit later on. The dynamic on that downhill is that if you're a little bit on the back foot, you may just have to take a couple of extra risks. These are however, very skilled riders. It does put them under a little bit of pressure, perhaps just having to uh, risk a, a cut tire or a mechanical. There's also a fact in the downhill with, with bigger loose rocks that the front rider actually uh, lift up uh, a, a rock and uh, you, you just the rider behind can, can actually ride into the, the rock that's in there it happened a few times and also sometimes you know how, how painful it is you hit a, a rock uh, a flying rock basically on your shim but uh, you definitely take that uh, versus a flat tire well, Trek Sellers and Marco are starting to creak a little bit on the uh Upper reaches of this climb under the pressure applied by Investec Songo Specialized. Alban Lakate is looking as though he's just about getting onto the back of Howard Grotz and Christian Heineck is battling, battling away behind him. Those two teams who are off now, they have to be back on the their wheels of the other two leading teams. Um, all of these top, uh, the two leading teams are so strong on the flat and they will never come back uh, even if it's 10, 15 seconds. That's always the dynamic with uh, Yaroslav Kulhavi in the race. If you've missed that train, we call him the Czech Express. Once the train is gone, that's it. It's gone. There ain't no more trains coming on the day. If you miss his uh, Express, you haven't got a ticket for it, uh, you'll have to 
could battle away on your own, which a number of the riders are now having to do, the teams. Uh, it's gone uh, from uh, Buff Scott. Very good uh, performance for, for Alban today, after uh, on and off days, and uh, today's uh, on day again. They'll definitely make it together over, over the top. A very professional outfit, uh, Canyon Topic. It's quite easy to spot Alban Lakata. He's a rider who, who wrestles the bike a little bit more. Christian Heineck is completely smooth. His body hardly moves, but uh, you can see right now, even Christian Heineck, who is known for his very still position on the bike, even he is, uh, is fighting. The pace is absolutely white hot right now. Heineck is impossible to read. I, I raced a lot. Uh, climbs hour, hour and a half. He always, if he's tired or not, he it's exactly the same on the bike, the exact same uh, RPM. Suddenly he just rides away or suddenly he just uh, gets dropped. It's, uh, it's always a surprise. It's uh, often a very good skill to have as a professional cyclist, a poker face and uh, more importantly a poker body. It's, uh, it's something that uh, is a skill to that a lot of the riders hone and in this case Heineck uh, is in touch uh, which you, the distance, the gap between the riders doesn't lie. If you're struggling, you're struggling. But it looks like Heineck and Topic are, or Canyon Topic are very much in touch with Investec Songo Specialized. The power and strength of Yaroslav Kulhavi here, the uh, Czech rider who has two victories in the Absa Cape Epic and heading towards a third and a first for young Howard Grotz, who rode last year in support of Yaroslav Kulhavi and Christoph Sarza. Uh, he didn't uh, finish with his teammate Montoya but did ride uh, a very key stage for them on stage six and uh, rode in support of uh, Sazer and Heineck, uh, and Sazer and uh, Kulhavi then. Canyon uh, has a complete uh, new equipment uh, uh, equipment setup for, for this year, a new bike, a new fork. I believe it also changed from SRAM to, to Shimano. So far, uh, uh, a very positive uh, change for them. It's. Uh Interesting to see the team dynamic here with uh, Yaroslav Kulhavi and Howard Grotz. Howard Grotz has really not put a foot wrong. He has struggled a little bit with the sandy patches, but uh, we had some insight from Christoph Sazer as to the dynamic in the team. Uh, with uh, Obviously, it's, it's clear to see who the stronger partner is, but Howard Grotz seems to have uh, held, it, held his own. Yes, he, he does. I mean, also Yaroslav, he, he, he's always leading, uh, especially on the flat where how we can... I don't want to say recover, but uh, he definitely does not have to push as hard as, as uh, Yaro. So meaning um, he maybe recovers a little bit better over, over the last last days. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a very, very good recipe. Beautiful uh, riding from both Kulhavi and Grotz. They've almost the, the perfect uh, combination. Grotz climbs so smoothly and so impressively. Uh, there's nothing much that uh, Kulhavi doesn't do well. But he's matched Kulhavi for every pedal stroke through this uh, race. And uh, the result is an eight minute lead, over eight minutes as they go in, went into this final stage. And they are just nailing that uh, coffin shut here for the rest of the riders. Certainly, and we're seeing a gap developing already, which is, uh, which is interesting. We expected Canyon Turpic to keep that gap closed. They're obviously doing all they can. They are turning themselves inside out. And they've been rejoined by Trek Salas and Marco. So the three team or the two teams behind Investec Songo Specialized are Trek Salas and Marco and Canyon Topic together. They need to get in touch very soon. And they're reaching the Land Rover Technical Terrain section very quickly. This is called the Bone Rattler. And just before that, the USN Hydro Point. No stopping on that train. No, no. The driver is uh, in a hurry yeah we've been talking a lot about um, how important it is to be uh, a well-balanced team um, this year we see actually uh, two teams most likely winning which are totally not balanced uh, how we very good on the climb uh, can match uh, can match Yaroslav but when it ever comes to flat or, or sandy, they totally uneven, which is actually which is actually fine because um, the weaker rider can can then draft and the stronger can can nourish. Where it doesn't really help if both can't really ride on the flat and um, but then they're super climbers. 
So in essence, uh, of the, the fact that they are they are not matched, in other words, so different, is what is the key to their success here because they both have different strengths. And uh, we're talking about Anagel Angel and Kate Courtney and uh, Yaroslav Kolhavi and Howard Grotz here. And uh, they've, they've dovetailed absolutely perfectly. The heat is on now on this descent. And uh, the Carter and Heineck chasing hard to uh, close the gap to Trexelis and Marco. Right now, the gap doesn't look a lot like a lot. It's perhaps just a matter of seconds as they go into the Land Rover technical terrain section, the Bone Rattler. But uh, just a couple of seconds with Kulhavi in the lead can make all the difference. I imagine they will uh, come together towards this, this downhill. If you're in the back, you just see the, the front guys and you just open the brakes just a little bit more. Um, Yara and Howie, they don't want to risk anything. So uh, I believe it, it will end up um, a, a joint venture on the bottom. Well, we're on the 60-kilometer mark and the 70-kilometer stage into Val de Vie, and uh, the racing really has hit fever pitch. That it has. This is a crucial part of the race. A lot of the riders were talking with some concern about this descent. You want to get through here safely as they'll get over the top and then plummet down back towards the base of the valley and you can see how high they've gone with Trek Sellis and Marco just about getting back up to Howard Grotz's wheel as they fly down here. Incredible scenes from the grand finale of the Absa Cape Epic as we bring it to you live from the Drakenstein municipality, the Berg Valley and ultimately the finish at Val de Vie. Well most importantly for Trek Sellis and Marco they have regained contact and uh, Christoph Sarza his predictions were right and we just got to hope that uh, we want an exciting sprint, a three-up sprint with the teams that Canyon Topic joined to. Last year it's been very, very challenging uh, towards Val de Vie on the flat. It was very sandy, deep and uh, also with, with rocks in it. This year they cleaned it up and also made a, a really nice uh, one meter, I don't want to say trail, but uh, a track towards the finish. So it's a, it's a nice, pleasant uh, finish to, to, to come here. And this is where you've got to get the balance right between uh, pushing hard and not too hard. A little foot off there on the inside from Kulhavi, just making sure that he gets uh, safely around the corner here in your desperate effort to get back. There's a problem. Looks like they've got an issue. Can uh, Canyon Topic have got an issue. They've had to stop. As we, uh, as we said, the trail is littered with sharp rocks and it's very easy to cut a tire. Alban Lakata will have to wait. He hasn't realized it yet, so um, hopefully Alban will, will know in the next, next corner, uh, right-hander, when he looks up uh, and he doesn't see Hinek coming. Meanwhile, the race is going away up front as Trek Selis and Marco use this uh, descent very, very smartly. Well, it's very difficult for Alban to hear anything with uh, two helicopters above them. So, um, yeah, you can't blame Alban not, not knowing what's going on behind him. You're so much quicker fixing it together. One can uh, bump the tire, the other guy can pluck if it's a flat tire. So you, you can almost cut the, the, the fixing time in half if you're two experienced riders together. Well, in this case, it looks like a who dares wins situation. Trek, Salas and Marco, they're going all in for the stage. All they would like to do is just... Uh, here we see Heineck is back on the bike. This is a good sign. Let's have a look at that rear tire, see if it is actually holding air. He will be very focused on that back tire, making sure that it doesn't go too flat, because the last thing he would like to do is to sit and fiddle with it a bit more. That'll lose him valuable time if they want to be, get promoted to second place overall. And that's the key, that uh, pair of uh, Avancini and uh, Manuel Fumich, Canada Factory Racing. That's where the race uh, is for the second spot on the podium. Just 20 seconds between the two teams going into today's final stage. Fumich has had a fall, but uh, he goes over the Land Rover technical terrain or through the uh, arch now, and they'll descend. It seems like they recovered quite well and um, you know, having a, a steady, good pace. If they get down this downhill safe, they, they secure their podium spot today. Trek Sellis and Marco on the front on the descent. One more little uh, hairpin to negotiate. They almost grind to a halt coming round that. It's a very, very tight. I, be I believe Alban will realize now in this right hander that Hinek is not here. 
I I have my big doubts that uh, they will will actually come to the finish with the top two teams. Especially with the front pair right now, they're going to be uh, they're going to smell the uh, s smell the champagne, or they're able to almost taste it right now. They are also fully aware that Investec Songo Specialized will not take big risks on that descent uh, because they will be focused on the prize of the yellow jerseys. Even uh, the Italians will come with a 20 second gap uh, lead into, into the flat with, with Yaro as the, the Czech Express, he quickly would, uh, would close that on with, with Howie on his back wheel. We just saw in the distance there that uh, Alban Lacaza has sat up he will be waiting for Christian Heineck. And uh, they'll be, we, we can tell you that they've got nearly four minutes on Cannondale Factory Racing at this stage. Whether they'll be aware of that is uncertain. We know Cannondale Factory Racing are on the Land Rover technical terrain now, but our last time check put uh, them around three and a half, four minutes back. But uh, they're closing quickly, so it could come down to that. It could be an interesting battle in itself. It will be for third on the. It could be for third on the on the stage, but critically, it could be for uh, second on the uh, general classification. I doubt uh, Yara and Howie will will sprint for the win on the last day. They'll be happy to celebrating over the finish line. But as I mentioned it earlier on, uh, it, it's just an image uh, piece that you can uh, come to the finish as a leader and, and still uh, showing, hey, we, 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 we could hang on and uh, we were even in, in charge of, of the last day and, and we could have won as well. Got a good indication of exactly what the gap is. The leaders are 15 seconds ahead of Investec Songo Specialized. On the road, Trek, Salas and Marco are in the lead. Howie Grotz on the descent here for Investec Songo Specialized. You can see how he is, uh, is riding like on X and now he sees, okay, it's nice and uh, smooth and then he just pushed very hard again. But uh, the nervousity of, of him is almost uh, uh, in hand reachable. You see from the dark uh, texture and color of that uh, soil, you can see there was a, there was a, a reasonable uh, downpouring of rain last night. As uh, Christoph said a little bit earlier, really welcome for the race, not too much dust and uh, it's bedded down the track very very nicely indeed so trek sellers and marker pin their ears back down on the flats having put the effort in on the descent to accelerate and get away from investic songo specialized they have it all in hand now oh he has trouble this is a uh, fumic and avancini well their pursuit of canyon toe peak well we saw canyon with a problem now it is uh, cannondale factory racing a truly bad day for this pair they had such great days in yellow. We've seen them really animate the race, and uh, it's such a shame to see it all uh, to see it all slip away with the flat. We did say that this is a really tricky descent, and the the team would be fully aware of this. They know the risks when they descend very fast. They would have been running scared. They would be uh, caught behind, looking to defend that spot, that uh, second spot on overall, and uh, catch the uh, the leaders heading into Valdivie right now. now. This is the uh, first turning into. Uh, the estate called Pearl Valley, and uh, it is part of the Greater Val de Ville, uh, development. And uh, look over their shoulder, they'll be delighted. Casa Grande and Ravensteiner now are on the uh, road to victory here in this final stage. They'll share a bit of work here, do a bit of drafting, and drag all the way along this nice smooth piece of tar. Every little second for them will count. They know the danger behind them. They, they know that Yaroslav Kulhavi would have it in him if he has them in their sights, if he wanted to, to turn on those afterburners. It's very nice to see that uh, Jack Sellers and Marco are doing, doing well this year. and They're so committed to the Upsa Cape Epic. They, they're not afraid to, to spend huge expenses to, to come here with two teams. It's already the third year they come with two teams. And uh, yeah, now it's uh, time to, to get rewarded. Uh, these two boys, I'm sure, once they hit this asphalt stretch, there was like a monster relief, uh, a deep, big, deep breath, and they know they they'll have it now. Christoph, do you think they'll uh, start celebrating now, or will they only celebrate on the on the line? They will only celebrate on on the line. I think uh, Yaro still wants to to close this gap, uh, but not sprinting for for the win. 
incredible performance they really have earmarked the stage it's been clear that this was uh, on their minds all week and trex allison marco turn onto the dirt tracks again not long to go 20 seconds is the the gap that's gone out a bit since we last saw the uh, the uh, time split this is the little section between uh, Pearl Valley and Val de Vie. They very soon can see the venue, so it's this open stretch here, uh, quite corrugated, and they turn left onto that uh, track they made new. It's all super nicely hard packed over a bridge, and then uh, yeah, they're in the Val de Vie venue, and uh, a few more grass pitches to go, and they, they finish the 2018 uh, Upsa Cape Epic. Fabian Rabenstein in his third at the Cape Epic. Last year he rode with Damiano, Damiano Ferraro. And the year before, uh, when last year in fact he and Ferraro didn't uh, go too well here. They finished, they withdrew after the fifth stage. But in 2016 he uh, finished eighth, eighth uh, in the Absa Cape Epic and uh, had an excellent ride alongside Daniel Alvarez of Colombia so a third partner and uh, they're making it count here on this final day on the grand finale trek Celes and Marco well we saw the scene back there in the previous uh, in the previous shot that's uh, what we would call the catch but the catch has not yet happened um, we also see some of the riders uh, go through here certainly trek Celes and Marco looked like they were weaving all over the road this isn't uh, this is purely because they're picking the best line. They'll be looking to, on the dusty tracks where there's a little bit of extra sand, they'll be picking the smoothest section so as not to get bogged down by that sand. Well, the legacy of uh, a lack of uh, water in these parts is uh, corrugations, fierce corrugations on these uh, wide open roads. Now they're on to this little trail I think Christoph was talking about a little bit earlier. It's to be a sweet riding for them. They do have to keep an eye behind them to make sure that they keep the pace on, but they'll be motivated, extra motivated, uh, thinking about that victory in at the grand finale. I think uh, Yara is taking a bit more relaxed than, than the other days. Um, I mean, those two boys are are so eager eager to win, and um, yeah, I think they they start slightly um, celebrating uh, in the back there. Little indication there that they're going to turn right. This is a part of the development that is still uh, uh, being prepared for further development. The Valdivia Estate, beautiful place to live here in this Burgruber Valley. There they come, Kulhavi and uh, Grazia. There's, you get the sense that uh, they are very comfortable where they are. They may not be showing the celebrations, but deep inside you'll know they know this is just about done and dusted. Another superb week for Investex on the Specialized. Absolutely, uh, the two actually do celebrate now and uh, not trying to, to to bridge to the front guys and uh, yeah, kind of like uh, putting a, a ego move in, which is uh, actually totally fine to to take it easy and um, and shake hands. It also gives them a bit of a chance to to enjoy the moment, to savor it as you uh, as you ride through that last finisher straight and. Um, Christoph would know what it's like to just put up your arms and and, and savor and to look back at the week and and think about um, and, and just really just soak it all up. It's actually the time they can uh, enjoy this this victory the most because once you cross the finish line, you just get pulled from from left to right, bow front to the back. It's uh, it hardly you can't think about what you, what you have achieved. And then uh, the first time they can really take a deep breath and be super proud again is actually at the drop testing where it's where it's all quiet and not many people have access Yaroslav Kulhavi, Howard Grotz uh, they'll turn now and enter the Valdeby estate proper with the finish very very close on the polo field up over the uh, bridge and getting over the road look over his shoulder there we go a little bit of celebration from Yaroslav Kulhavi fantastic a wheelie on the top of the bridge you know they are now within reach of his third Absa Cape Epic victory and alongside a man who has joined him after the retirement of uh, Christoph Sauser to uh, come and take on the Absa Cape Epic and how well they've ridden absolutely supreme well, Howard Grotz is about to ride himself into American cycling history. 
This will be the United States' first ever victory at the Absa Cape Epic in the men's category. Also incredible to think uh, it's Yaroslav's fourth Absa Cape Epic, three wins and one second. Uh, that's an incredible uh, statistic. Michele Casagrande on the front here, uh, riding uh, just in front of Fabian Ravensteiner. This is the pair that are going to win this stage. They're on the bank with the polo fields. They're looking over their shoulders. They feel the heat from uh, Kul Kulhavi, even from that distance. Well, they'll be running scared. They, if they only knew that uh, Yaroslav Kulhavi was pulling wheelies just as he was coming into the coming into the finish area, they would know they wouldn't be quite so nervous. But they've seen the power of the Czech Express firsthand, so they're not taking any chances. Head down and to the finish is what it's about for Casagrande and Ravensteiner putting the cap on a very creditable week for this pair. Ferraro and Poro, perhaps not quite as successful. They have finished third overall here before, but look at the, uh, the comfort, the ease, the relief, and the, the joy that this pair no doubt are experiencing now as they cruise along the grass bank, of the polo field to their right, and they'll head around to make their way into the finish area. What a job they've done. No smiles yet for these two. They're grimacing. They're putting on maximum power. Make sure that they absolutely seal this one. Again, he cannot stop looking over his shoulder. Fabian Ravensteiner just don't know what is happening. And they'll last up onto the bank. The, the finish is on their right-hand side. Now they look across, and now they know. They have seen that they're not being pursued at any uh, great pace by... Investic Songo specialized. The smiles break out for Fabian Ravensteiner and Michele Casagrande. They had a plan for today and it is certainly paying off handsomely for the Trek Sellers and Marco team. Cheered all the way to the finish. Must be their biggest team. Uh, must be their biggest win uh, for the two uh, of their career. I can't think of any other win uh, that they're too hard in, in, in the past and uh, I'm, I'm sure they will never forget this moment and they're just enjoying it now. It's a really good way to uh, finish a stage when you are in the lead and don't have to uh, scrap it out for a sprint. You can, uh, can salute and, uh, and smile and wave all the way to the finish line. Coming into Val de Ville and the finish of the grand finale, the final stage of the 2018 Absa Cape Epic. Your winners of the stage, Fabian Ravensteiner and Michele Casagrande of Trek at Celis and Marco too. They've done a fantastic job on this final stage. They'll be delighted with their achievement. But this is the pair who are going to walk away with uh, the big spoils after a week of rock solid consistent riding yes they've had their difficulties with punctures but they mitigated those and they really managed those uh, situations with great maturity and great calmness and it has all come through with two stage wins through the week a little way from howard grotz his first absa cape epic victory alongside the czech express yaroslav kulhavi and howard grotz of investec songo specialized the winners of the 2018 absa cape epic second on the day but first for the week a remarkable performance by two fantastic bike riders. Well, really has been a superb weekend. Uh, well, you felt that champagne before, Christoph Sauza, and uh, a man you won it twice with is uh, Jaroslav Kulhavi. The emotions. Yeah, it's uh, after eight days. It's just all the pressure comes off, and uh, even even you have seven minutes, you're never safe. And the two guys they, they woke up very nervous and just with that last downhill uh, it, it's still in your head you know you can still lose it on that bloody last downhill and uh, just coming onto the asphalt then they knew they have it and taking third on the day and uh, cementing their place in second place overall canyon topic on the right alban lacart of the world marathon champion and christian heineck they'll be very pleased with this they were looking for the win it wasn't going to be i think they realized that uh, later on in the week but they have secured second place for canyon topic and first people to uh, they will congratulate cool harvey and grotz on a very good job and a good job indeed and it's uh, it is a, maybe a consolation prize to uh, be on the podium for both the uh, stage and for overall um, but they will be absolutely delighted with this 
It'll be there won't be grudge uh, the likes of Yaroslav Kuhavi and Howard Grotz who put in an incredible performance in all week. Uh, they'll be very happy to take that second place. It's very nice to see the top three teams on the overall classification. It's uh, the pure reflection actually of, of the strength and not um, reflection of, of um, the team has bigger, more mechanicals or, or any big crash. Right, let's go down to the finish line. Owen Honey is down there. Well, with our winning uh, riders today in the final stage of the 2018 Absa Cape Air Big Fabio Raven Sane and uh, Michele Casagrande. Fabian, they say this is like winning uh, on the Champs Elysees, the final stage of the Tour de France. How does it feel for you? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, today, a very good day for us. We attack on the hotspot, we can win there, and then we decide to, to go full gas. But uh, the group come back and uh, on the last climb. Uh, Yao and uh, Howard attacks, but uh, we we can stay near and uh, then in the last downhill, in the last uh, uh, land rover technical zone, uh, we go full risk and uh, we know that uh, the other guys uh, will uh, have a look uh, of the overall and uh, yeah, full gas to the finish line and we are very happy. Michele, coming back to you, I mean, fantastic ride today. When you got that gap on uh, the Investec Songo team, did you feel that this was the moment? You have to push all the way to the finishing line? A uh, yeah, beautiful day uh, for us and uh, to win in uh, this place, Val de Vie, is fantastic for me. It's a big dream for me and I think for uh, Fabian. <laughs> well, congratulations and well done on a great ride today. Thank you. Yeah, it does feel in, in, in some ways they've redeemed the, the week. Here is the chase for the, uh, the still the top ten. Now there's an interesting group here. Carl Platt, Ushub, Emmanuel Fumi, and Henri Cavancini, and Joachim Rodriguez and Jose Hamida have, <laughs> have put themselves in here. They've, uh, they're well, they're 37th on the overall standings, but uh, they targeted this day, didn't they, Neil? Well, we've got quite an illustrious group here that are, that are surging to the line. This is, uh, we all, we've all seen Jose Hamida at the race, multiple stage winner, huge animator and uh, fantastic character. Got a five-time winner in here, previous champion Urs Huber as well, five-time winner is, of course, Carl Platt. Burrito, as he's known, has been finishing in the, on the, well, finished on the podiums and some grand tours, so, um, yeah, quite a group. Yeah, they definitely saved themselves for, for the last day. I think they, uh, quite easy. Uh, yesterday and the day before and it, it pays off and uh, now here they are i wonder if they they go for a full gas sprint yeah i think they're up for the sprint here no question about it uh, for hamida and rodriguez uh, he in his they're in their second uh, absolute epic with ursuber on the front driving this little train hamida behind rodriguez off he goes so they want to take fourth place here. I don't think Fimic and uh, Vincini are too worried about it. But uh, the little sprint for the line here. Uber goes. It's going to be the second rider across the line. Hamida in his familiar style. And they will take the uh, little sprint there. Carl Platt not up for the sprint. And Fimic and Vincini rolling behind them. Look at the uh, legacy of that crash he had earlier in the day for Manuel Fumic. It's been a tough day for Canada Factory Racing. They lose second. They go down to third place but they've been fantastic uh, animators of the race and characters of the race throughout at the sharp end let's go down to the finish and hear from the winners of the 2018 absa cape epic investic songo specialized how drops and yaroslav kulhavi 2018 champions yaroslav kulhavi and howard graz uh, yaroslav it's a third victory for you at the absa cape epic how does this one feel for you yeah, it's amazing and uh, I mean we had a pretty good eight days and uh, yeah, we are really happy and uh, I'm really happy especially for Howie because uh, he's a little bit newbie here and uh, yeah we did it and uh, we was the strongest riders and uh, it's, it's perfect for us and uh, it's perfect for the future. Oh, it, uh, it, it was a bit of a mismatched team. If you look at the strength uh, between the two of you, very strong climber from yourself, but you had to deal with the power of Yaro. How did how did that go for you this year? Uh, the first few days, I was struggling quite a bit, um, but then you know finally kind of turned a page, and then you know I, I could I could feel comfortable on the climbs and just hang on his wheel. So, you know, it actually worked out really well despite kind of the the differences. What did you learn from this year's tour? 
Whew, it's it's not over till it's over. You know, there was one day where I, I just thought, you know, it was it was done for me. I, I was completely empty, and then you know, sure enough, you kind of bounce back. Yeah. Yaro, coming back to you. This is the third time you take to the top step at the Absa Cape Epic. You've won it twice with uh, Susie, winning now with Howard Grotz. How does it differ for you? Yeah, it's amazing, and uh, maybe we will try. Uh, win again uh, with Howie and uh, uh, Susie is having five victories and uh, Are you not... saying you're chasing Susie's five victories? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's so close, but uh, I was uh, very happy yeah. riding uh, with, with Susie because uh, I was learning a lot from him and uh, Susie is uh, our supervisor and uh, for everything, so he helped uh, a lot. How are you coming back to you? The coming back for 2019 want to defend your title I, I think think so though I mean the team will definitely ask me to so I, I, yeah I, I have a, a good uh, I don't know a feeling for this race so far how does the champagne taste uh, I don't know it kind of smells bad actually <laughs> well listen go in your choice some more champagne well done congratulations hey, thank you very much uh, Howard Grotz, and uh, so we guys. haven't seen a broader smile all week from Yaroslav Kulhavi. He's chasing a record. In fact, unfortunately, Christoph Sanz had just left. He's gone to train, I think, uh, because he wants to come back and win a sixth title. No, Yaro, uh, he's, uh, Christoph, fantastic uh, performance by Yaro. And the way he's performed here, dare I say it, five wins is not out of his reach. No, um, they can win uh, still many times. Um, such a good, good pairing. I, as I just mentioned to you, Gerald, I said maybe I, I want to partner up with Yaro again. So uh, <laughs> he's definitely not going to win next year. So um, the five titles are for one year or two more years out of reach. <laughs> well, uh, of course, you've got some pretty handy riders there. So we look at the uh, general classification. So at least the stage seven results. Rabenstein and Casagrande, Kulhavi and Grotz, Guerra and Pinto, the top three, Lecatra and Heineck in fourth place. And uh, in fact, I think it was Ricardo and Heineck in uh, third place. And uh, it'll be uh, confirmed. These are unconfirmed results for the stage. But uh, we'll certainly give you the confirmed results in a short while. And we'll also be going back to find the leading women as they make their way to Valdivia. Thank you, Laura. What a great and uh, Jose Mira and Joaquim Rodriguez racing for seventh place in fact so finishing in the top ten a great result for them and uh, Bell and Beers another rock solid performance showing they've got some form at the end of the race Nad Pro in tenth place the uh, Apps Africa jersey uh, leaders on this stage well, these are the men who are leading the Absa Africa jersey category. Matthijs Bierkus and Julian Jessup from Paige Eurosteel, South Africa's premier mountain bike uh, team. And uh, they have two teams in this. And, well, Bierkus' uh, plans for the event initially were to go for general classification alongside Philip Bass. Sadly, Philip had to withdraw due to illness the day before the event, elevating young Julian Jessup uh, up to the status as riding alongside Bierkus as the number one team and uh, they've done a very very solid job they've had some difficult times during the week they had to r fight hard to get the red jerseys away from hp Cree and stuart maria and uh, they've done so over the last three days to hang on to the abs africa jerseys and bukas well he's uh, got a number of these uh, three already in his uh, cupboard and for julian jessup well he'll be delighted what a great experience for the young man who uh, from kozulu town who has such a great pedigree as a junior on the cross-country circuits. He's a national junior cross-country champion. And now he is uh, finishing Boy, very good. handily inside the, the top 20 at the Absa Cape Epic uh, alongside Matthijs Bjorkas. Paige Eurostil, as I said, South Africa's leading mountain bike stage race team. They have a support team. In fact, Jessup was going to ride alongside Philemon Sabona in support of base and Bjorkas. Philemon Sabona now has uh, slipped back at least is riding alongside young Peter de Toy, another junior with a uh, great uh, future ahead of him. He was in school last year and here he is riding the Absecator Vig. This is the Africa jersey and on general classification base, uh, Bukas and uh, his partner Jessup have done a fantastic job here. And they'll pop the wheelies, well, Matthijs will 
as they cross the line to finish eight days of glorious riding at the Absa Cape Epic. Julian Jessup and Matthijs Bierkes for Paige Eurostil. Very nice to see actually uh, winning the African jersey on a, on a South African bike. Uh, it's, a, it's a detail, but uh, a very nice detail. Absolutely, Paige. There he is, the man who develops and uh, is the man, the boss of the, the, the team, Patrick Maud. That's his bike. And well done. So we'll be going back to uh, catch up with the women as we again reflect on the stage seven results. Indeed, Bob Scott did sneak in ahead of Lakatra and Heineck in uh, third place. So another podium for Pinto and Guerra. Lakatra and Heineck in fourth place, and Bob Scott two teams inside the top five. Adrian Rodriguez taking seventh today. Platten Huber inside the top 10. They uh, will finish on GC likewise. And 10th uh, on the day, Bell and Beers of NAD Pro Mountain Biking. So, great elation for Paige Eurostil taking the picture with the, the man who started Paige Bikes, Patrick Maud, and uh, Julian Jessup and Matthijs Beck as winners of the Absa Africa jersey category. And here are their second team going really well. And alongside them, Arno de Toy and Tim Hammond. So, this is uh, very much an African quartet. Hammond from Botswana, in fact, and Arno de Toy, a very fine cross country racer. But Philemon Savona, Peter de Toy, and away they go. I think Arno de Toy was uh, going to allow uh, Philemon to roll across the line there, but well, well ridden uh, in support of Dierkes and, Bay and uh, his partner Jessup. Uh, great ride for the Paga Eurostil team. What a great initiative from one of the real big success stories of the Exaro initiative. Philemon Sabona has uh, three Xaro titles to his name. He's finishing his seventh at the Cape Epic, but here he is finishing uh, as a part of uh, the top pro team in South Africa. Also in Nbuka Momsen, another Christian South African Heineke, team. Yes, Christian Heineke, pretty about the mechanicals today. Take us through what happened. Uh, I mean, I was just thinking, uh, it's amazing we got through uh, through the Cape Epic uh, just with a little mechanical which we had in uh, the fourth stage and then all of a sudden uh, maybe just a blink of second of uh, not being uh, super concentrated and I got a small puncture, So, but luckily I was able to fix it super fast with a, with a plug and uh, I could continue, but uh, for a moment I was uh, a little bit stressed. Yeah. Well, congratulations also on your podium position because uh, it was a pretty tight battle all the way to the finishing line. Yeah, the whole Cape Epic was like a roller coaster. We had one good day, then we had a bad day, good day, bad day. But in the end, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about the second place. Um, I just got like also a little bit under stress uh, when Christian was off my wheel. And I looked back and I had to wait for him. But just a pity that we not made it to the podium for this stage in Val de Vie. But uh, uh, as, as I said before, I'm really happy about the second place now in the GC. And yeah, it's great. Um, the, the specialized really deserve the win. Uh, I have to say that they were like every day, uh, like on on the on the fire, and yeah, uh, that's we we have to come again and try it. Christian, coming back to you. Every year this race changes, and the dynamic changes with the different teams that come here. How different was it for you personally? Uh, yeah, it does change, and uh, I think we kind of adapted to it for this year. We trained a little bit different. We trained together with Alban, that uh, helped a lot. Uh, we put more intensity into it, and uh, and uh, so I think we we kind of are adapting to the dynamic that changed, and uh, that definitely paid off. But uh, like Alban said, I mean, on one hand, we came to win, uh, uh, so uh, second place could be in a way a disappointment but uh, over and over I think we must be super happy because uh, I think we did a great job we were fighting from the beginning to the to the end and uh, specialized was just uh, they did just great I mean uh, their performance was amazing and uh, uh, right now they were just unbeatable for us what will it take for you guys to get onto the top step in 2019 
Well, the uh, women are making their way towards uh, the finish here at Val de V, and this is the third place team, uh, PMRA CST Racing's Margot Moschetti and Raisa Gulao, a French Brazilian combination, and uh, they've been uh, making their way steadily up the uh, standings and uh, find themselves now in uh, third place on GC. But uh, as far as we can tell, they uh, are leading the race at the moment on this stage. So they're putting in a huge effort to take uh, the stage honours here on the final day in the grand finale. Yes, we can't see any women's team uh, close behind them. It would be very nice to see, see them winning and they, they also get a, a piece of the cake. Well, Christoph Sauzer, I think it's time you went and had a piece of uh, the celebratory cake at the finish line. Thanks very much for joining us. Christoph Sauzer, five-time winner here and uh, giving us your insight and a uh, little peek inside the Investec Songa Specialized Machine. Thank you. Thank you and uh, it was an absolute pleasure to be here might be on his bike next year because the challenge has been thrown down by uh, Yaroslav Kulhavi. He's challenging. There are the uh, next uh, two teams on GC. In orange, the leaders, Annika Langfell and Kate Courtney. And ahead of them, Robin de Groot on the front and uh, Sabine Spitz uh, of Germany wearing the German champion stripes on her chest. The American Kate Courtney is the American champion and then Annika Langfall, her national champion as well. And they're heading towards victory here. They had a 46-minute lead coming into the stage here, Courtney and Langfall. So all they really had to do is to stay out of trouble and make sure that uh, they stayed with the sender's health, uh, Robin de Groot and Sabine Spitz. From one champion to another in our commentary box. Wonderful to have uh, so many great uh, champions with us. Sadly, not on the trail. And uh, Ariane Luti is alongside us. Yeah, Ariane, who had to withdraw from the race earlier, in the week but uh, that uh, disappointment is our privilege to have you sitting alongside us yeah thanks for having me uh, good morning um yeah i would rather be out riding for sure but uh, it's really great to watch from here as well so investec songo specialized have been the dominant team they've won every stage on the race so far you're looking at this now they're sitting a little bit further off the pace content with the with the job done so far yeah, I think uh, they've done a really excellent job. Kate uh, came prepared to this race. Uh, it's, it's actually the first day, except the time trial maybe as well, where we see her um, fading or ta tapping off a little bit. But, I mean, on that last day, you know, everyone is feeling so much pain and uh, you really need that extra, extra motivation. And maybe also just knowing what awaits you in, in Val de Vie, what a big uh, win that could possibly be. Um, you need to find every little motivation to push through the pain on this last day. And we see those two ladies, uh, Marco Moschetti and Raisa Kulao, um, um, really going for it. It's beautiful to see. It's Kulao on the front here, the Brazilian, Brazilian champion. And uh, behind her, Marco Moschetti, just 24, both riding their first uh, Absa Cape Epic. So really great performance through the week for this pair. Raisa Gulao, she's from Brazil. Um, she's also ridden the Brazil ride before, and if one knows uh, how hard this race is, it's uh, uh, really hard to rain as well, just like here. Well, she's saying her ability here, and uh, it's wonderful, as we were talking, uh, we heard earlier from Christian Heineck how nice that the dynamic is with new teams coming into the Absa Cape Epic uh, sharp end every year, and uh, this is exactly what uh, we're talking about in the women's race, PR. PMRA CST Racing. Uh, there's no question that Margot Machetti is a talent, the 24 year old. She rode the cross country at uh, Stellenbosch a few weeks ago and stayed on and has been rewarded for her efforts by uh, this performance. They're leading the stage so far, but on uh, general classification, they uh, are in uh, sixth place at the moment and find themselves a little bit off the pace. Now there is uh, the Apps Africa Jersey category leaders, Candace Lill and uh, Amy McDougall. And uh, they've been going very, very well indeed. Well, they had a great, uh, th they were lying second at the at the time check at the 47.5 kilometer mark. And uh, that was uh, only 41 seconds behind PMRA CST Racing uh, with Ascenders Health at a minute. So it looks like it's regrouped a little bit, but uh, Nevertheless, uh, the race is on. That's 
virtual uh, overall at the moment, so that is unlikely to change too much. It depends where Silverback KMC are, because Mariska Strauss had a wretched day yesterday. She was struck by some gastric uh, flu overnight on uh, Friday night and uh, battled through yesterday. I think they lost nearly 17 minutes and their second place to Ascenders Health. Let's hope she gets through to today. And huge courage there for the uh, South African champion. Uh, two days at half speed is really uh, quite, a, quite a devastating thing for your performance. Uh, we can see already that the, on the day at the 47 kilometer mark, they've lost five minutes already. They do have plenty of time in hand to rescue that podium, however. Yeah, really nice to see um, the fighting spirit of those ladies on the last day, uh, especially with uh, Amy B uh, McDougall, um, who's been ill this week as well. And as she's showed already in the Pioneer, where she had an infection in her chest um, and just kept on riding. Well, she could manage it. It wasn't as bad that it would really be a risk for her health in the future. Um, but also here, you know, if you just don't have all your energy, it's very tough to go through these eight days. You rode alongside her in that race as well, uh, so you know a little bit about her, her riding. Yeah, she's definitely someone, you know, who can really take a lot of pain. She's, uh, <laughs> she's a real fighter, uh, sometimes um, also fighting a, a lot against herself in her head. Um, and then, but when she turns her switch around in her mind, then, then, then she's really unstoppable and, and can just bring so much more out of herself. Kate Courtney in the blue helmet with the pink bike, distinctive all week, and behind her, Annika Langpel on the climb with uh, Sabine Spitz just sitting on the front of uh, Courtney's wheel. And uh, Robin de Kruit, I think, is just a little ahead of uh, Sabine Spitz. Yes, and in the women's team, Investec Songa specialized in that uh, orange race leader's jersey. Uh, Kate Courtney is uh, from the United States. She, too, will become the first American to win the ABSA Cape Epic. Yeah, she's actually also just finished her studies uh, last year. Uh, she was still a student. Um, and to combine both studies and, and racing on that level is definitely a, a very big task, just as well as Annika. She finished her dentistry studies last year, and you need a lot of focus. You need uh, a good support system to go through that. And as Annika said uh, in, in her post, you know, it's really something you can't do for very long. Um, to co cope with the pressure on, on racing on that level as well as her side, it's very hard. Well, this is fantastic. Uh, this is our leading team on the road today, Team PMRA CST Racing. Uh, Raisa Gulao and Marga Moschetti as they chase a stage win here as they head towards the Land Rover technical terrain and uh, there they are into it now. A look over his shoulder from the Brazilian. They're holding nothing back. It's fantastic to see the determination they have set their stall out to try and take a win here on this grand finale stage. As we've seen with the men, it is uh, a really big stage to win. It's uh, the last stage of the race. Uh, great coverage and uh, great kudos if you do take the win here. And they've put themselves in a very good position to do just that. Yeah, it's really goosebumps coming into that, uh, into that venue in Valdivie. So many spectators, uh, so much cheering. It's it's the most amazing thing. I mean, I still remember my very first epic going into uh, Lawrenceburg Estate back then. Um, yeah, it was incredible. Eric was uh, I was riding with Eric back then, and he was telling me all the, all about it the whole time just to motivate myself. And yeah, it was all worth it. I mean, you really go through so much pain, but it's it's really worth it to to go for it. It's Val de Vie, the uh, Champs Elysees of mountain biking. A uh, very prestigious uh, stage to, to win and uh, incredible feeling to, to finish. Now, right there, we see them on the Land Rover technical terrain section. Uh, they'll need to measure their efforts on here. We've seen already Christian Heineck having a puncture. Can happen so fast. Some really sharp stones on this section. And they'll need to combine risk and, uh, and also just a, just a little bit of conservative approach to heading down here. It's actually very interesting in the ladies race we haven't seen much mechanicals um, probably also the riders are just slightly lighter and uh, pinch flat the tires a little bit less and uh, as far as I know uh, yeah in the ladies race really if you have the legs you you make sure everything you ride equipment that's solid and you rather put a little bit more sealant into your tires just to be safe um, yeah you can lose much more in a mechanical than and just maybe having slightly heavier tires or something like that. 
It's uh, often a very sensible approach that goes into equipment choice. Uh, it's very easy to, to measure what the time loss would be with a slightly heavier tire. That is a finite time loss. But uh, when uh, there's a puncture, the time loss can be uh, almost infinite. It's impossible to measure. So the, definitely the, the smarter choice is to ride with robust equipment. Candice Hill and Amy McDougall from Dorma Carver. They've been in, uh, involved in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in an inter-team little tussle as well with uh, Carmen Bukaka and Sam Sanders. It's been very close between those two. Yeah, actually it was. Um, I'm not quite sure what the team strategy is. I mean, Candice uh, was in absolute prime shape uh, going into this race and had to uh, change port in the last minute as well with Adelheid Morat uh, crashing uh, ahead of the Stellenbosch World Cup. Um, Amy had to fall in and then got ill as well. It's very unfortunate. It's a little bit a uh, similar story to, to our team story, but um, yeah, I think, I don't know exactly what, what their strategy was then at the end, but I believe it looks like they're just both going as hard as they can. Right, uh, the women going down the bone ratchet with a number of the men, and uh, this is what you and at least uh, Massimo De Bartolis and uh, his partner Andres Pochik, the winners of the Dimension Data Masters, will you force uh, 7C2. Uh, it's been in a terrific battle for the jersey, and they've finally pulled it off. Uh, Bart Brenchens and Abra Azevedo were their closest to rivals. Both those riders have won it four times, so that's a significant win for De Bartolis and Pochik. And a highly contested category, the Dimension Data Masters. Uh, we've seen some incredible battles. Last year we saw George Hincapi and Kendall Evans uh, finishing and uh, winning it on the last day. And uh, this year it belongs to Massimo De it's, it's actually, in fact, Massimo De is, the, uh, is a former marathon world champion in the elite. So uh, high pedigree of riders going into this category. It will be very interesting to see um, how it's going to play out between Team Ascenders and... Uh, Investic song of specialized uh, on the last downhill. Um, Robin and Sabine are uh, more cautious riders on downhill. Uh, the skill may be not quite up there with uh, Kate and Annika, but on the other hand, um, Kate and Annika also have uh, a jersey to lose and they really, really don't want to make a mistake on that downhill. So it's going to be very interesting now to see um, who's going to take uh, second and third here. Sorry, oh. third and fourth. Well, the, the, the gap is just under three minutes from this pair back to Dorma Carver, who've just gone through there. So Dorma Carver, South African pair, wanted to win, want to win on the final stage here. It'll be um, interesting to see if they they manage to claw back some of that on uh, the technical terrain. I know uh, Candice is very skilled and uh, Amy loves this sort of uh, the technical terrain. So it'll be fascinating to see if they're able to claw it back. That's where it is, just under three minutes, Ascenders Health and uh, Investex Songo specialized together. So the race leader is content with what they've done over the last seven days, and that's to win all the stages. They're not going to uh, make it a clean sweep, but they're very happy with what they've done so far. Tactically, it'll be interesting what uh, what will unfold in front of us. We would expect uh, Team PMR Racing to keep charging. They're in the lead. Uh, they've got a two minute, 41 second gap on Dorma Carba. Uh, the question is, is what will happen uh, for position third and fourth? Ascenders Health and Investec Songo Specialized. Ascenders Health may want to wait for Investec Songo Specialized to, to cooperate perhaps, uh, maybe gain some time, but uh, it's highly likely that everyone will just do, uh, just do a surge to the line, just ride as fast as possible and uh, it'll be a, a drag race. Yeah, I spoke to Robin last night as well. Uh, she really came around in this race a lot and uh, just showed what a fighter she is coming back from injury. She really didn't have the preparation as she normally would do, um, only having started uh, late December with her preparation because she couldn't uh, basically sit in a, on a bike earlier uh, because of her injury. Um, yeah, and she definitely wanted to, to finish this race on a, on a high note. Uh, they, they weren't quite um, prepared to go with the legs of uh, Marco Moschetti and uh, Raisa Kulao here, as well as uh, Dorma Kaba, but I mean, just to come in third if they do so, um, it will be a great achievement for them on the stage here. 
Beautiful to watch the riders flow down this uh, trail courtesy uh, of the e-bike. Stefan Sam is the man uh, piloting this machine, all 25 kilograms of it. And uh, they've absolutely loved it. He and Thomas Dietsch. Stefan, of course, a three-time winner. And uh, Thomas, a six-time finisher of the Absa Cape Epic. We see them at the end of each day and uh, in the media center and they're absolutely caked in dust. Uh, their job is to ride as close to the to the back wheel as possible to get the to get the best pictures. And uh, with all the dust flying up during the week, uh, they, uh, they look a real picture at the, at the finish. Fantastic nice. to see. And nice to hear the, the encouragement for the girls as they went past there. Yeah, really. Um, I must say um, thanks to all those amateur teams, uh, the main teams that get overtaken by the ladies. Uh, I really almost always experienced great uh, sportsmanship from them going out of the way as soon as possible. Um, really no big egos out there and uh, that was really nice to see here as well. So there is the virtual over overall Investic Songo Specialized riding conservatively today, taking no risks and ensuring that they finish the stage safe and sound. Anna Galangville has been a driving force in the women's race that has been that uh, no one has been able to uh, stay with except most importantly Kate Courtney her partner middle through midway through the race Kate I think needed a little bit of ma managing just to to uh, stay with Annika but she's uh, been brilliant throughout the week the under 23 World Cup champion cross-country World Cup champion champion of the United States of course and she was a runner-up of the World Championships she did have a nasty crash at the World Championships finished second to Sina Fry in that World Championship race in Cairns last year yeah, Annika, really an incredible rider. I mean, it's really not easy to be the stronger one as well. Yes, it sounds maybe easier, but um, you have to really watch out for, for your partner all the time. It takes so much concentration. You can't just do your own thing here. And, uh, you know, sometimes you would actually like to save some energy and just stick to your wheel, but you have to look out for your partner all the time. And she does really an incredible job here for that. We're on to the run-in. They're heading towards Pearl Valley. Our Moschetti and Gulau are leaders in the women's race on the stage number eight, the grand finale of the Absa Cape Epic. They'll know they are closing in. They haven't done the event before, so they're not familiar with the finish, but uh, they'll be uh, very well aware of how close they are. They're Speedometers will be telling them their gadgets, uh, their devices will be advising them as to how far they've gone. It's a 68 kilometer stage and uh, they're inside the last couple of kilometers now. Still taking turns, so there's not just one rider, always the stronger. Um, yeah, Marco Moschetti with the camel back here. Um, hydration is really not such an easy thing if one has a slightly shorter legs and the second bottle doesn't fit behind the saddle. Um, yeah, it's, it's small things like that one has to figure out for the Cape Epic um, and it's, it's often easier, uh, it looks easier than, it's, than it really is. Well, we have here the uh, world champion, world Ironman champion in Kona in 2014 and the runner-up. These two teamed up for the Ironman Foundation and uh, it's a charity ride for them. They've absolutely had a fantastic time, although it has been hard. We've been catching up with them every single day, and uh, there's, a, there's a big cha big change in their relationship. They've uh, formed an incredible bond. Uh, this week they were competitors. They were not competitors. They were, uh, they were teammates. They worked together. They really uh, looked out for each other. And uh, at, uh, as soon as they get back to their, their real jobs, their day jobs being Ironman triathletes, uh, they'll have to be competitors again. But uh, fantastic to see these guys out there. Sebastian Kinley and Ben Hoffman uh, have been competitive as well and uh, given it absolutely everything uh, to their first Absa Cape Epic journey. And uh, I don't think their plan was to do a lot of running and swimming in between, but I don't think that's happened. I think they found it a bit, a bit, a bit testing. Yeah, I think it could almost have been a recovery week for Ben Hoffman. I once heard an interview of him where he was saying he's doing uh, 40, 40 hours a week. So I think they, <laughs> how many hours they've done this week? Uh, I don't think they're at 40 yet, so uh, uh, maybe he's done a swim now and then. Every effort now from Gulau and Moschetti, the leaders of the stage here on the corrugated dirt road on the outskirts of, or in fact just inside the uh, perimeter of Valdivie. What a glorious moment for them. They uh, 
no doubt uh, targeted this stage uh, once they got through the week and thought well we're feeling quite good let's uh, see what we can do on this final stage and uh, hasn't it paid off for them brilliant ride by Muschietti and Gulau as I said it's great to have a new team here new blood into the Absa Cape Epic um, the combination of yourself and Gita another new combination uh, Esther and Angelica new new riders coming in all the time yeah, exactly, and I think that's uh, just going to progress all the way. I mean, those two girls are 24 years old only. Um, it, it's incredible how they are riding um, still on the last stage here. You know, you would think this young, they would maybe break uh, towards the end of the week, but they, they've definitely done a good preparation. And now that they've gathered some experience here, know how, how this whole show works, uh, I think, you know, they will just um, take it from here and uh, do so much better in their futures races and I really hope they come back here again. I think uh, just uh, the final sections of the trail here around the uh, state, uh, it's an exciting development and uh, very mountain biking focused in fact. Uh, a lot of the residents enjoy enjoy the sport and uh, enjoy riding around in the in the area and um, is some surrounded by um, what five mountains Gerald and uh, some excellent trails in the area one of the uh, most famous areas for for mountain biking and so lots of options here for them yeah that's Simonsburg in the uh, in the background there it's, you can ride all the way around Simonsburg pretty much they've got a conservancy there and some magic trails that uh, you can enjoy there there's Bunnock Valley there's uh, of course, front hook and the Burger Dam. So plenty of options, but uh, the only option for these two is just to keep going here. They're going to turn right through this uh, area that is still being developed on uh, Val de Vie. And uh, they'll be into the gate over that red bridge and on the grass. And then the smiles will no doubt break out. Actually, I don't think they will, because I think these two are only going to really celebrate once they get onto that final oh, 50, 60 meters uh, under the finish arch. That really looks like a great improvement from, from last year, uh, riding uh, into Val de Vie. Uh, last year we covered quite a lot of sand in that last bit, um, and now there's this beautiful trail. I think uh, that just uh, brings up a smile as well in those radar spaces. They're holding nothing back. They are not to know how far Dorma Carver, Candice Dill and Amy McDougall are behind them. The uh, South African pairing would dearly have loved to have maybe taken a stage win on this final stage as they've got stronger and stronger through the week thanks to Amy's uh, uh, clearing up her illness. This is the leading team now on the way into Pearl Valley. We see they're uh, both adopting the, the signature aero position holding onto the tops of the forks. Um, perhaps Ariane can give us some insight into how that all came about. Yeah, I think uh, Christoph Salsa was uh, kind of the initiator of this. Uh, or, yeah, he showed it very often in his racing. And uh, I also I tried it out in the beginning. It's a little bit um, a balancing act on the bike. And if there is side wind, one has to be quite careful. And also with uh, holes in the ground. But uh, on the tar road, as we saw them just earlier, uh, it's actually a really comfortable position and uh, definitely very fast because uh, aerodynamics definitely play on a, a role in mountain biking just as well. Especially when they're going above uh, 20 kilometers now, aerodynamics do play a major role. And uh, yeah, right behind with Stefan Sam, getting a, a bike's eye view of exactly what it's like on these trails. I mean, speaking of aerodynamics, we also saw Annika and Kate um, wearing a, a semi-aero helmet in the time trial as well, you know. Um, and there you can see Skechlight is really pushing uh, always those boundaries. Um, I mean, Christoph Sauser is uh, certainly behind that as well, uh, giving them uh, all the advice. And, you know, it, it's really about those uh, little things that count uh, together. And they really want, yeah, try to do everything as best as possible. And uh, you also might wonder why, if it does give an advantage, an aero helmet, uh, why not ride it all, all week? The, uh, the challenge is that all week there's some pretty warm temperatures and uh, the thing about an aero helmet is not quite as well ventilated as a, as a normal helmet you could say and uh, it might even be a little bit heavier so slight compromise on on weight and um, and ventilation but uh, definitely an improvement on aerodynamics which can make all the difference every second counts exactly uh, um the head gets a little bit warmer below the aero helmet and i mean we've seen the temperatures rising to 40 degrees here um and then you really 
want to be as cool as possible and definitely a cool head in this race is always <laughs> something you want to take with you. Well, it is Reis Galau and uh, Margaret Moschetti just making their way towards the finish. This is the uh, leading pair in the orange jerseys, Annika Langville and uh, Kate Courtney. We seem to think between them and uh, Reiser and uh, Margot are Dorma Carver and Ascend herself. They may be a little bit uh, further up the road than these two, battling it for second and third on the stage, the two South African, uh, or the one South African team and the one South African German combination. We're still going to be waiting for news as to how Dorma Carver are doing and what the time gap is between the first placed, uh, well, the leader, leaders on the road today, um, PMRA CST Racing, and what the gap is back to Dorma Carver. Well, there they are, the leaders. Uh, a look over the shoulder from uh, Reiser Galau just to make sure that they're not being uh, closed down by any of the other teams. But I think they know now they had to come the smiles. Galau, or is that a grimace? But uh, they put everything out there, emptied their tanks today, as one would expect on the final day if you're going to win the stage. And uh, they're going to reap the reward. They'll be up onto the grass bank. Once they get up there, they can look to their right. They'll see the finish finish. A big cheer for our leading women as they get onto the bank. Now they can look around and see as the men did and know that they've got this one pretty much in the back. So beautiful to see like a team we haven't seen on the podium yet uh, coming through so nicely. And that just shows, you know, the ladies have just as much ambition and they're really fighting so hard out there. Um, very, very beautiful to see. And I think... All that cheering, I mean, it just has to bring them back to this race. We see uh, Morchetti is actually on a hardtail bicycle. We've uh, we've seen most of most of the developments in, in mountain bike uh, technology have been going towards the full suspension bikes. Morchetti riding a hardtail. Interestingly, this is a, the orange hardtail you see going past is a brand called American Eagle. This is a a brand that actually is uh, where the, none other than Bart Brenchens is involved with. He's involved with the development of it and um, all, uh, all part of the, the fabric of, of mountain biking. So they'll come around the last corner. Broad smiles from Brazilian Reisigalau and the French rider Margot Moschetti, both young women who made a big impact on the APSA Cape Epic at their first effort here. Sixth overall, but they win the final stage here in Val de V. Congratulations to PMRA CST Racing's Margot Muschietti and Araiza Gilau. Yeah, beautiful to see, so emotional. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. And yeah, mentioning her heart on mountain bike, um, maybe today, you know, where there was more climbing per kilometer, uh, that probably played in her favor. Earlier this week, you know, it was just, uh, basically too rough to float over those hard trails. Candace Lill and her partner Amy McDougall are second riders on the road heading towards the finish now for Team Dorma Carver. They are the ABSA Africa jersey, whereas they'll be the first winners of the women's ABSA Africa jersey category. And they've had, as we've uh, talked about earlier, a difficult week with Amy being very ill on the first couple of days and not knowing whether she'd even get to the start line the next day, but uh, they've dug so deep. Amy's a fighter, and Candace is in great form at the moment. And uh, they've come home. They'll finish second on the stage, and they'll win their Absa jersey as well as the leaders go over the Red Bridge. That would be uh, Kate Courtney is leading Annika Langfall through that little section there. Uh, the American on her way to becoming the first American to win this race. Uh, it'll be a fantastic moment for her. And another uh, fantastic moment for Annika Langfall. She's, uh, it would be her fourth title. Uh, certainly a, a veteran at this, uh, at this event. Fourth and four starts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. And that just shows um, how she's made for this race. Um, she can create incredible power on the flat. Um, so in this race, it's less about power to weight than just actually the raw power you can put out. And Annika definitely um, has that ability of uh, just creating a lot of power on the flat. Candice Lill and Amy McDougall. Candice, a junior world championship bronze medalist uh, on the cross-country bike uh, some years ago. And is now 
very much one of the top marathon and cross-country races in South Africa. And Amy, riding the 650B bike, is a, she's a diminutive figure, but she's got the heart, the size of South Africa. She's a real fighter. And they're going to finish on the second on the stage. I mean, a fantastic result for them. They've uh, they've been really pushing hard all week. They've been they've been through, been battling their own uh, their own issues all all the time. And uh, it's really they've got their just rewards today. It all comes at once with uh, step top step of the podium for the Absa Africa jerseys and uh, the second step uh, on today's stage. Fourth yesterday, they finished second today at uh, Valdivi. Candice Lill and Amy McDougall from Team Dorma Carver. They are the winners of the Apps Africa jersey title this year, but also second on the grand finale stage, which will be a great delight to them and uh, their entire team. Armin Dukaka and uh, Sam Sanders uh, are their other team in the race. But now we focus on the undisputed queens of the 2018 Apps at Cape Epic. Annika Langvall and Kate Courtney. Yeah, it's been a long week for them. Uh, as Annika always mentions, uh, to keep up the focus, it's, it's really not that easy. One gets the more tired every day. Um, it's, it's so easy just to drift off with your head a little bit and just to, to concentrate on your pedaling, but you really have to watch out for every little rock because a rock uh, might as well finish your race in the blink of a moment. You mentioned focus, and, and it's been a, almost the key word all week for, for Annika. Almost every time we've spoken to her in an interview situation, uh, start of the day, finish of the day, it has just been focus, focus, focus. And uh, as you have illustrated, I think Christoph as well, as a, as a winner, of stage winner, there's so much else that goes, around, uh, that goes around you at the end of the day that uh, you need to keep that focus. But they will finish in fourth place. This is third place uh, on the stage. Robin de Kruit and Sabine Spitz. They'll head over the last little rise here. With the field on their right. The team of Senders help pair. Just chipped away consistently through the week. Sabine had cramps on the first day. They didn't have a great first two stages. But uh, they managed their efforts well. And they will take third on the stage. We think that Sabine Spitz has been struggling a little bit. She's certainly uh, no stranger to pain. She's able to manage it, and uh, she's uh, pushed herself absolutely to the limit. It would be great to see when she crosses the line, just that uh, that expression of pain fade into a smile. Yeah, also, Robin uh, told me, you know, it, it's more uh, a victory for, for themselves, uh, kind of beating their own demons in the head, fighting back from injury, kind of overcoming adversity. And I think that's what they're showing here. They really fought against their own demons in their heads and, and showed such great fighting spirit. Sabine Spitz and Robin Lecroix. Robin perhaps uh, in December didn't realize, didn't even think then she'd be crossing the finish line of the Absa Cave Epic, let alone in second place overall, third on the final stage, well-ridden team of Senders Health. And here come our overall winners of the 2018 Absa Cape Epic. Quite supreme all week. They've won seven out of eight stages. They finished fourth today, but that is not really what matters. What matters today is that they are the winners of the 2018 Absa Cape Epic. Annika Langfell on the right, her fourth title, and on her right, and uh, finishing her first Absa Cape Epic as a winner, Kate Courtney from the United States. What a moment for this pair. And completing a remarkable dominant ride from the Investec Songo specialized team all round with the men's team there's Howard Grotz to congratulate them fantastic to see the two Americans <laughs> Annika making sure how he will get a bit of uh, that smelly champagne on him as well yeah, a bit of mischief there at the finish it's just uh, great to see their guards drop they have been so professional the whole week and not letting a not putting a foot wrong and uh, just a bit of fun at the finish is uh, is it is really great to see exactly yeah that's really um there was so much you know that like uh Cheryl said before there's so much going on in this race around this race uh, so much social media uh, so many messages that come through and um you almost never get to shut down really properly your your body is constantly under tension a little bit 
and and it's very hard to really relax and recover in that uh, setting and it's, it's definitely something that Annika is struggling with quite a lot uh, she's a very quiet person more um, needs really space on her own and for her it's a very tough week just to cope with um, so much noise around her she tries to get out the way as much as possible those things Third overall are in, Silverback Campsy, Annie Last and Mariska Strauss. It'll be an emotional finish for them. They were second a year ago, but uh, I think there were moments yesterday where they didn't think they would finish here at Val de Vie, and I think you can sense the emotion from Annie there. The British champion, the South African champion, there they are. It's been a really, really tough couple of days and a combination that have become good friends and great riding partners over the last uh, two Absa Cape Epics. I think a massive relief for Mariska Strauss that she was able to consolidate that uh, podium spot. Uh, really struggled through today's last two days. She's been, uh, been feeling really in uh, shadow of her former self and not performing to, uh, to the level that she would normally, but still able to uh, pull it out of the bag and, uh, and finish on the, on the podium. Well, whilst the overall finishers uh, have a quick photograph taken with their team, and uh, the men's team as well. That is a golden moment for Investec Songo Specialized. Colombian Grots alongside the overall winners, Langfall and Courtney. It's a very rare time and they'll remember Stage winners forever. today, stage seven of the Outsa Cape Epic. Uh, Reza and Margot, well done. Congratulations. Did you expect this today? It was amazing. Sure, not expecting today. I was just fighting for top three again. But when we saw in the kilometer 15, 20, the leaders a little tired, I think today is our day. So in the last 30 k's, it was just full gas and don't look back and keep your attention, save the bicycle and ride together. It was amazing. I think I never had this feeling. I think Cape Epic is a huge school for me and I will live here with a new rider. Tell us about your partnership. Be happy with it this year, and will you come back in 2019 to do this again? Yeah, we did already Brazil Hyde last year. Yeah. Now we start to uh, know better each other. Margot is more, uh, uh, more young than me, yeah. but I think she did a really amazing race. I had two really bad days, sick, so she had patience, wait for me, and then I reborn and we can ride together again. Congratulations, we'll see you in 2019. Thank you, for sure I come back. Thank you. Well, the Brazilians have been great supporters of the Absa Cape Epic across all the categories over the years, and uh, Marga Moschetti uh, is right up there with them, and uh, of course, Henri Gavancini, uh, the two uh, uh, top flight riders, and uh, setting the pace for all of them. So, great, great riding by Marga Moschetti and Rise Gulao, big part, Rise Gulao from uh, Brazil. Lovely to have him here. So, the day will continue with him. Um, Moments of great celebration for all the riders as they roll across the finish line here at Val de Vie, the beautiful Val de Vie on what is now a sunny morning, or yeah, still morning, only just. And uh, the back end of the field will come in in the afternoon. But now let's hear from our overall winners at the 2018 AFSA Cape Epic, Kate Courtney and Annika Langfaller with Owen Honey. Well, thank you very much, Yes, I'm joined by the uh, champions elect in 2018. Well done to both of you, Annika and Kate. It was a, a great battle. Today you took it a bit easier. Uh, we, we have been working so hard all week. And today we just wanted to, to be safe and really make it safely to the finish line. Uh, so that was our main goal for today. Kate, you must be absolutely pleased to be at the top step of the podium for the very first time. Take us through your journey and what it feels like to be there. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit of an emotional finish for me. I think, you know, when I set out to do the Cape Epic as my first marathon, like, race and stage race, uh, people thought I was a little crazy, and my inner circle really supported me and pushed me to get here, and Specialized gave me the opportunity to race with one of my heroes in the sport, um, and I really just couldn't have asked for a better experience, and I think I uh, proved to myself that I was capable of doing it, and that means the world. It's happy hunting grounds for you. You won uh, the very first World Cup race here in South Africa, the, the uh, Cape World Cup, and then uh, you went on to win this. So it's been a great series of victories for you. Uh, it's actually a little bit unbelievable. It's way more than I could ever ask for. Um, I had a really good winter training and uh, came out of the winter really strong, feeling good and motivated. And uh, yeah, coming here and having such a blast is unbelievable.
Is this a partnership we'll see again in 2019? We'll see, but uh, but yeah, it was a really incredible week of teamwork. I think Annika is such a champion, but also such a humble uh, racer and someone who really gives all of herself to the team. And we were able to get into a really good rhythm and work together. And I think, you know, what more can you ask for than bringing out the best in each other? What do you say? Partnership again, 2019? <laughs> it's, been it's been amazing to race uh, with Kate here, uh, I must say. Um, yeah, it's been really, really, really good racing. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I think both of us, we have to focus a little bit on the, the season ahead of us and, and evaluate everything, and yeah, and then we'll take it from there. Well, listen, best of luck, especially the World Cup Series as well. We'll see you on television, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So in 2018, Annika Langfell and uh, Kate Courtney not committing to uh, coming back to defend their title, but there's so much that can happen between now and next year. So uh, we'll uh, have to wait and see. Brennan Anderson on the front here and uh, Nikki Hillamy from Nysda. And this is our leading mix team, which is fantastic. They've had a ding dong battle with Marida Argentina in the mix all the way through. And Marida Argentina, in fact, had all manner of uh, problems in the race early on but uh, and in fact did lead initially uh, but uh, the journey by Junta Fair, Nikki Kilomi and Brennan Anderson have uh, finished very very strongly. Augustina Paza and Cesar Letoli, the Argentines were 42 minutes back at the start of today's stage so there's no question that Nikki and Brennan from Kozula Natal, Brennan and Nikki from Nysda will uh, win the mixed and she is of course the uh, chairperson of the Stellenbosch University Cycling Club but just around the corner from us here at uh, Val de V and look at the smile you can already see I think she's uh, just loving this opportunity parents Hein and Susie are here watching and will be uh, very very uh, proud of her performance and will pop down onto the field yeah beautiful uh, to see uh, Nikki I mean she's uh still very young and uh, studying hard so uh, to get such great achievement is, is really surely motivating I always like to see her in the women's race in the future I hope she's gonna find herself a really strong partner so we'll uh, grow our bunch a little bit um, but it's always a good try to first go in the mix give it get a bit of, of an experience um, and that she's certainly done this week. So the winners of the Virgin Active Mixed category at 2018's Absa Cape Epic, Nikki Kilomi on the left, and Brennan Anderson on the right. Well, well ridden over the last uh, week. They had to work hard to earn the victory, having uh, not won the jersey all the way from the start. That was uh, the Argentine pair, but uh, they finished strongly, and that's what it counts. If you want to be on the podium, they've done a great job. Yeah, the mixed category took a little bit of a back step in terms of um, coverage and recognition, um, which is rightly so, I think, because um, uh, well, in, in the past, the mixed category was kind of the big category where uh, most of the strong women were racing, also back then when I was still uh, racing it. But um, it, it's great to see that the Absa Cape Epic um, really improved the coverage and also the prize money for, for the women. And, and that um, really pushed the women's racing up a notch and that's what we can slowly but surely see here. Um, it's, it's now three years that the women have a separate batch as well and, and that makes the racing just so much more exciting and it will allow more and more ladies to, to compete in this category. So, Journey by Junto, the winners of the Virgin Active Mixed category. Now, let's go down to hear from Owen Honey who's got the winners of the Absa Africa women's jersey with him. First in the Africa women's jersey, and uh, what a great ride it was for them after fighting throughout the 2018 Absa Cape Epic. Candice Lowell and Amy Beth McDougall. Amy, it was a battle galore from you guys, for you guys from the very start. Yeah, the first few days for us were challenging. Um, Ames got a stomach bug just before the prologue, actually. And then we had four really long stages, um, which we kind of just, uh, Ames kind of just suffered through, and I did my best to help her. Um, then we decided, no, we're going to take a day a bit easier to help her recover. And ever since that, then we've pretty much fought back and ended strong. So I think we did a, did a good job despite all the circumstances. And of course, it's amazing to wear the African women's leader jersey throughout and to finish it and to be the first wearers of it. I, I hope it inspires many other African women to come and compete in this category.
Amy, like you said, it was a battle all the way, but consolation, obviously, winning the Africa women's jersey for the very first time that it's been introduced at the Apto Cape Epic. Yeah, it's a real honor, I must say. So we are super, super proud to be wearing the jersey. And it has been a, it's been a battle, but Candice has been amazing, I must say. I've been struggling, and she's just been there and pushing when I need to push and pulling when I need to be pulled and, you know, giving the encouraging words. So I've put it all out there this week, and Candice has just been awesome, yeah. Well, well done to both of you. See you next year. Thanks. Thank you. They would have uh, ridden this race with different partners, but that's uh, what happens in the sport of mountain biking. Uh, injuries, illness, they do uh, take a toll. As uh, riders prepare for events, it brings great heartache. Jenny Stinnerhaag has had a major surgery to her hamstring and will be out of action for six months. Sadly, she was the defending race champion here. Uh, Ariane knows only too well what uh, you've lost two partners uh, around about this Apsa Cape Epic. Same with Esther Zeus, had uh, two partners uh, who couldn't complete uh, the event. Medals being handed out, proud moments indeed for every single finisher of the Absa Cape Epic. This is the moment so many of them will remember. It brings you back again year in and year out. The uh, pain and the suffering for the last week will dissolve away. That's really amazing. Grandmaster the, uh, the emotions. You've got a bolt in Robson. We're no stranger to wearing this jersey. Congratulations and well done once again. Yes, thank you very much. It was a fantastic week with Robert and um, I'm really glad it's over. It was not easy, but um, yeah, we are here and I'm happy. Uh, Rob, your partner looks very relieved. What was the reason for that? <laughs> Well, definitely not because he was the weaker partner. Now, Udo is very strong and, uh, and very focused. Uh, we had two words to each other as we came closer to the finish line, and that was mission accomplished. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, you know, it's not easy to win the, the, the Cape Epic in any category. You know, it takes a lot of concentration. And uh, coming down the last hill, I was saying, no flats, stay on the bike, and just get over the finish line. Yeah, it was a great week. Really enjoyed it. How much does this race involve taking a bit of risk and also reaping the rewards versus maybe, you know, just backing off slightly and, and not having those issues? Did you guys push? Were you pushed all the way to victory? Yeah, I mean, that's part of the Cape Epic, you know, to have mechanicals to suffer, to ha have uh, physical problems, cramps, whatever, you know, and you have to come through, you have to fight through. It's for everybody, it's the same. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, you must handle it. You must handle the conditions. And this is the special of the Cape Epic, yeah. This is the special of this week. How sweet is this victory? Oh, too sweet. I think it might be time for a time and though. <laughs> <laughs> well done to both of you. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, nice Bart, at least uh, Udo Bultz and Robertson won every single stage of their race. Ed Abati Bucher and hans jörg Gerber, Andrew McLean and Joel Stransky in third place of Cyclab KTM. So, the uh, Absa Cape Epic is uh, coming to a conclusion here at uh, Val de Vie, but we've seen some incredible racing by the men's elite uh, racers as they made their way from Wellington all the way to Val de Vie here on this final stage, 68 kilometers. So they started at Wellington, the elite men at eight o'clock this morning, a bunch that is uh, still fairly big it uh, has lost a few teams uh, along the way through the week but they headed out at uh, a really sizzling speed there uh, neil gardner well we we really expected today to be a really exciting day it, the uh, grand finale into val de vie is truly the uh, champs elysees of mountain biking it's a very prestigious uh, stage to win uh, a lot of riders uh, maybe hold back during the week to to target this particular stage so um, yeah, we really expected some fireworks. Well, the first bit of drama we saw was uh, Manuel Fumic of Cannondale Factory Racing losing time on the climb. He's taking some strain. Yeah, he was not. Uh, he was fading a little bit in uh, the latter half of the week, and his partner Enrico Vincini was really strong, uh, always animating, and um, uh, Fumic able to match in pedal, pedal stroke for pedal stroke, but struggling towards the end of the week. And uh, up front, the race was going away from them. This is Avancini and Fumi trying to make up the ground. And then this bit of drama. And just a slight switch there from Fumi as he uh, tried to change lines and brought himself and Jeremiah Bishop from Canyon Topic 2 down heavily in the fall on uh, what just an open piece of fire road. Yeah, these unpredictable What's roads. There is a the surface is not exactly certain what happened there, but uh, the surface is uh, very right. loose. No and uh, sometimes. 
things can catch you by surprise when the concentration is down. There's no question that Trex Ellis and Marco had approached today with a mission and they set about achieving that mission by going to the front quite early. We saw Yaroslav Kulhavi taking uh, as the trails uh, opened up. Yaroslav took, uh, took the initiative and uh, went really hard and uh, Alban Lakata could match and uh, Heine could match but uh, we, were, we just saw a little bit of distance between them and Trek Salas and Marco. Eight minute overall lead for Yaroslav Kulhavi and Howard Grotz going into the stage so keeping out of trouble today was key for them. Uh, they weren't necessarily interested in the stage win and of course for Canyon Topi, key for them was to secure second place. They had started the day 21 seconds down and Fumic and Avancini were their big rivals and the big losers were Kenya Centurion Vada this week. They got a little bit slower and slower through the week uh, as Nikola Robach started to take some heat. Well, Nikola Robach and uh, Daniel Gesmeyer did win a stage, so they did get their just rewards for a fantastic effort. Great performance here from the Austrian and the Swiss. Fumic and Avancini went into the Land Rover technical terrain, they hence that drive hard towards that uh, approach to the Land Rover technical terrain. They were trying to chase down Canyon Topeak and see if they could close the gap. Meanwhile, up ahead, Trek Seles and Marco too. Fabian Ravensteiner and Michele Casagrande had escaped on uh, the uh, big descent, the, the, the rough descent of the Land Rover technical terrain, and uh, pinned their ears back for the finish. Well, they crossed the top more or less in touch with Investec Songa Specialized. Vestek Songa Specialized not absolutely completely motivated for the stage win. As you can see, Aristav Kulhavi really wanted to celebrate with Howard Grotz. Howard Grotz, the first American to win the Absa Cape Epic, and uh, Yaroslav Kulhavi, his third title. And the Italian pair of Casagrande and Ravensteiner rolling across the finish at Valdivis uh, Polo Field to take the stage win for the Italian pair. It's the biggest win of their careers, an absolute delight for Ravensteiner and Casagrande. But uh, the major win, of course, was to this pair. Howard Grotz of on the left-hand side from the United States, alongside now three-time winner Yaroslav Kulhavi from the Czech Republic. Investec Songo Specialized taking the win at the 2018 Absa Cape Epic in fine style. Two stage wins, and they took the yellow jerseys in Robertson, and they never relinquished them, and uh, have been dominant. Fourth on the day, but uh, finishing in second overall, Canyon Topeaks, the world marathon champion Alvin Lakata and Christian Heineck, and third, on the general classification, Canadel Factory Racing's Emmanuel Fumic and his partner Enrique Avancini. That was a little bit uh, earlier today. Highlights from the stage finished today and the final stage of the Absa Cape Epic. 68 kilometers uh, and in fairly good weather, I think, from a rider's perspective. No rain, but no intense heat either. So they'll be delighted with that. Really, really good ride for every single rider. Uh, the cloud overhead, uh, we had a bit of rain last night, which will be very welcome for all the riders just uh, dampened down the trail and made it uh, less dusty. They've had a lot of dust, had a lot of dust to deal with in those stages around the Breda River Valley. But uh, they'll be very, very happy with the way. In fact, the, the weather has been very favorable, aside from the time trial day when it was pretty intense heat. So, confirmation of stage seven's results at the Absa Cape Epic. Fabian Ravenstein and Michele Casagrande of Trek Salis and Marco II taking the win by 47 seconds from Kulhavi and Grotz in the yellow jersey with uh, the very impressive Buff Scott 2 team of Pinto and Guerra finishing on the podium once again, as they did on the first day in the prologue under Table Mountain. Closing out the top 10 were Nico Bell and Matt Beers of South Africa, the best African team to finish today, Fumic and Avancini in ninth place today, but third overall. The general classification has seen Kulhavi and Grotz take the win by just under 10 minutes over world champion in the marathon, Lakata and Heineck, with Fumic and Avancini fin finishing in third place on general classification. They wore the yellow jersey for a couple of days, won two stages, but ultimately finishing on the third step of the podium. Great week for Bob Scott's in Turin Vada in fourth and finishing uh, overall in seventh place. Steve Jan and Burma Bulls two. Great ride for Klaas and Bauer. Kulamanzi Project in eighth place. Absa 
jersey winners Jessup and Bjerkes. The overall results in the women, Langfall and Courtney taking the win by 46 minutes from Spitz and De Groot, with Silverback Cam C in third place.